I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, tonight, uh, Well, we got five minutes before the Grammy Presentation Society, and I don't see anybody here from that yet. Anything that you want to do, Mr. Martin, before we start? Six oh five is one. Just asking. Anyone, anybody hear me? Sort of well, the we can start with the one topic. I'm going to go down to. Other business, water main update. Oh, okay. We'll do that one. Okay. <clears throat> the bids came in to Mass DOT for the water main project and the 202 project. Mm -hmm. The concerns we have is the overall low bidder, <coughs> Baltazar. The cost for the road work is $3,838,188. The cost for the water main project is one million seven eleven one sixty four. Uh, a little bit out of our price range. Uh, the second lowest bidder, his total bid was five million five sixty two oh thirty two. The water main portion was one million four eighty one five eighteen. Again, outside of our price range. The third. Lowest bidder was Mass West for a total of five million five eighty one four twelve, with the water main portion being one million one seventy one eight sixty eight, which was within our ballpark. And then the last one is CNA Construction. They were the top or the highest bidder. 5,711,382, with the water main being 1,329,289. The cost estimate that was put out by Mass DOT, which was almost in line with what we were looking at, was 1,272,483.50. When we had signed off on going forth with the bid, we were told that if the price was more than 10% of the estimated cost, we could pull out. Um, my recommendation is we pull out. Uh, I did talk with uh, Jeff Sear at uh, the Water District today. Uh, he had indicated that the district was willing to give us the, or sell us the water that we were requiring. The only question that they had left was the number of users who would be connecting from day one. Because the issue was if we put a 12 inch pipe in and we don't have enough users to keep the water moving, there'll be water quality issues that the district will have to deal with. I thought we gave him those numbers three times. He claims no. We don't have a firm commitment of who will connect and who won't connect. We only, the only thing we've said is we would put a stub at every site. But we did not have letters saying that everybody would connect who had a stub going to their property. So are they backing up their position that everybody has to connect? Because I thought that was their position, everybody had to connect. No, but that's, they don't have a guarantee because they can't force someone to connect if they don't have the money to connect. That's the other problem. So, okay. and we can't guarantee because we never sent anything out asking or telling them that they would have to connect if the water right. went down. So, with that being said, um, as Mr. Martin says, the first two up for Balazar and Ludlow are out of our range. And there is one thing to notice here, if you look on line 58 on the spreadsheet up there. Uh, the, put the water pipe over the bridge on Stony Brook. This is what 
kind of blew my mind when I looked at it. I'm used to seeing bids 5 to 10% difference per line item on a contract. If you look at uh, Mass West, he's going to charge his line item cost to put the water pipe over the bridge is $58,000. Uh, CNA is 91000 Both of those prices are within the range that we got the estimate for originally. But if you go over to Ludlow and Balazar to put the water pipe over the bridge from Ludlow, he wants to charge 385000 and to put the water pipe over the bridge from Balazar, it's 800000 So these line items have a giant delta factor in them, and nobody can explain them. But the bottom line is the overall price. If you look at Balazar, he, if you look at the estimate for the state's portion, which is $4,477,414, Balazar says he's only going to charge the state three million eight hundred thirty-eight thousand in change, but he's going to make up the difference by charging our town one million seven hundred eleven thousand. And the, the same thing with Ludlow. Again, if you look at the state, he's four point four million. Now, on Ludlow, he is going to come in less for the state but he is going to come in over on the town. So he's kind of passing the profit off to the town. So with that being said, I would make a motion that we have to reject any water pipe bid that exceeds our allowable amount. Because the reason I'm saying that is because once Balazar finds out that we're not going to be involved for 1.7 million plus. Where's this profit? I don't think he's going to stick around. But I look at the federal acquisition rules, which I work with. I'm not 100% with the state. So I don't know if there'll be a change in his estimate bid or anything with MassDOT and the same thing for Lolo. So. I think what we should do is we say that we cannot afford more than what we originally said. And we have to reject the, the bids that are over. But if for some reason MassDOT comes back with a new bid that falls into our price range, we give Mr. Martin and myself the approval to sign for the simple reason MassDOT wants their information last Monday and we didn't have a select board schedule until today. And we weren't having an emergency meeting because it wasn't for health or safety reasons. So they were told they would have to wait. Any other comments? Well, what happens with South Alley? They're still looking for a guarantee. I mean, that's where our water is coming from, so. But the issue is, is if, the, if we can't afford to put the water main in, we will indicate to them that due to the prices that came in, we cannot afford to install the water mm -hmm. main. Therefore, the water is not necessary at this point. Right, but I, think, I thought you were just saying something different. No, I said basically that, but I said, but if these prices change after Balazar and Lolo f find out that we're pulling out mm -hmm. as non-participating, in my personal opinion, they're losing all their profit because they've stacked their profit on the town. So they may pull their bids. You don't know that. We don't know that. I don't know nothing. I'm just trying to say is if they do come back and say they pull out, to give Mr. Martin and myself the permission to sign, and then we'll have to comply with South Hadley and do the number. But if we don't have a number, there's no sense going out and do all the legwork. Well, the question is why would we sign something if we're still with South Hadley? We don't have a, a number they're looking for. We've given South Hadley, based upon what they told us, everybody had to hook up. We've given them that number three times. But, but they but don't have to hook up, though. That's but well, that's what we we're don't have them. a signed letter yes. stating that they will hook up on day mm -hmm. one. You were correct, because when they, we asked to, uh, them about their opinion, and they weren't changing. <coughs> so I don't want to sign anything. We have all the facts in place. So. And I agree with it. Yeah. Oh, I, I have no problem with that at all. 
The, the other concern I have, Glenn, is the third one, Mass West. They have a piece of property that would benefit from this property line. That's right. So I don't know if that would raise a bid protest or a challenge on the state level with the AG's office. Good. Yep, we have no idea. Good. Oh, because they are. They underbid it so that they could benefit and develop their property. Did they disclose that they? Don't know. I didn't see any okay. of the bid. I mean, if they disclosed it, then that's one thing. I but doubt it. They did. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because our, our we're our estimate was one million two hundred and seventy-two thousand and change, and they're the only ones that came close to our estimate. Everybody else was over our estimate, but they are under the state's estimate on every single one of them. And from talking with Mr. DeRoche, he says it's not unusual for them to underbid the state because that's what they do the majority of their work with. And he doesn't know what happens if we withdraw as a non-participating. Again, I just I want to move forward till we have all the facts in place from So South at this Avenue. point in time, do you wish me to tell Mass DOT that we cannot accept Balthazar's price of $1.7 million because we do not have the funds available to construct a water main at that price. Oh, that's why I am, because we don't yep. we didn't get any fund for that. Yep. So and we'll just make a motion for Mr. Martin so he can tell him that we cannot accept Balazar. I'll make the motion to instruct Chris Martin to let Mass DOT know that we cannot accept Balthazar due to it being over our funding level. I'll second Jen's motion. Any more discussion on that motion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Three ayes. Now, Chris, if they come back with another price that was in limit, do we want to get permission <coughs> to do it, or we want to have to tell them they have to wait to the next select board meeting? Have to wait. Next select board meeting? Yep. Okay. Because I know Mass DOT was hot on it last, they wanted it last Monday, and we said we couldn't give it to them. So you just want to leave it like that for right now? Okay. Let me cross that one off our magical list. That sucks. Yep. But you can see from 58000 to 800000 for one line item. Makes me wonder if there was... They're patting the books on the line items, sure. what they're doing. I, never, I usually see 5 to 10% difference on a line item. Did they think they were building a whole new bridge? No, I don't know what they were thinking, but the, the bottom line is, let's say a contractor owns a gravel pit. Well, you know, that line item for him is going to be less expensive than somebody that's going to buy the gravel from right. somewhere else. So that's where you usually see a 5 to 10% difference. Well, but just, this so, just so we're clear, though, this board's not making allegations to well, any company is padding their price or anything no. like that. So I want to make sure that we're clear on that. No, I'm, I'm just saying looking at the line items as it being. I understand that, but I want to make sure that... We're clear. Yep. Okay, then Mr. Phelps is showing. Yeah, I just saw that. And now we'll do the Granby Preservation Society. Mr. Phelps, come on up. Good evening, sir. Good evening. How are you? Fine, thank you. Yourself? Good, thank you. Good. How are you doing, sir? Well, and your, and yourself? I'm doing. Mm -hmm. You're all looking well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, Mr. Phelps is here. They want to conduct a craft fair yes. at the old Kellogg Hall. However, in our bylaws, a craft fair would fall under the definition of a flea market because they, they are selling spots for people to come in and be able to sell their goods at Kellogg Hall. The Preservation Society, while is willing to apply for a flea market permit, they would like to have the $200 fee waived. Am I correct? 
correct because otherwise it'll eat up any potential profits profit. that they could be making, mm -hmm. which is the reason they're conducting the craft state, craft fair. Mm -hmm. so. uh, I have no problem since it's a nonprofit, like we typically waive mm -hmm. nonprofits so they can get the most they can. I personally don't have a problem, but we can decide that on the vote. The only thing I did make a notice while reading the uh, application that you had, just as a point, whenever the town does something like that with Charter Day, we always add a liability release form. So the town is not held liable if a vendor or something is at the, on Charter Day, gets hurt or some of their equipment is ruined. I noticed on yours you didn't have it. So if you do or do not, that's private business, but being as it may, I just was going to say I'd recommend that you add that to the vendors so in case somebody slips down the steps or whatever like that, mm -hmm. they don't come back and take all your profits. You know what yeah, I'm saying? We, yeah, yeah we, have a, uh, we have a rider on our insurance policy that does cover our events, even the ones off-site. Okay, but you might want to make the people pay and sign a liability release form. That's what the town does. Okay, have the, have, you're saying have the vendors sign. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just as a suggestion, it's mm -hmm. not required. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate yeah. it. I'd follow up the insurance company and ask them. Yeah. Do yeah, that's, that's, that's something that we covered with them right. yeah. back when they signed. But generally, I'm sure they'd appreciate that. Too. Right. That way yeah. they wouldn't have to pay off on a claim. Yeah, that's true. That's right. Any more discussion on this one? No. We're we'll to do a motion and we'll do this one. Um, I will make a motion to, thank you. <sighs> Approve the license FM 20-01 for Granby Preservation Society, LLC, Kellogg Hall, 250 State Street for March 28th, 2020, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. <coughs> for a flea market slash tag sale license with the fee waived. I'll second the motion. Any more discussion on the Granary Preservation Society permit? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Three ayes, Kathy. All set, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. I just had the warning my formula is because I got some uh, TVDs in there. That's for Chris. I want to know. Okay, now we'll go to the Granby Energy Committee. <coughs> the Granby Energy Committee did not post a meeting. They're not calling a joint meeting. They're just here in case anybody has any questions. Lillian and Robert Camus, Lenny, like have have it, have it, and I saw Joan Gagney somewhere, sitting over there. Um, Mark Vincelet and Joe Shalou couldn't make it. I mean, you're trying to do too many things at once right now, because I want to speed through this so we can get on going. Okay, for the committee members or select board members, that sheet go. Yeah, somewhere. What you're gonna look at on that sheet, we're gonna go through and we're gonna give you the recommendations for your this year's Green Community uh, application for FY 2020. The main color codings for you to look at is the blue and the yellow. Because if you decide you wanna change anything, those are the only ones that we recommend that you would change. On your first page, you have the vehicles. I wanted to explain this because you see a le legends in the left hand side. If you notice at the uh, under blue, it says FY20 and to the right of it's 200,000. 
They have changed the rules from 250,000 down to 200,000. So that's one of the changes. Uh, they have other changes that don't affect us yet. Like now, I'm not going to go into mounts. I'm just going to keep it going. But the max we can put an application in for it is 200,000 for FY20. In addition to maintenance on the buildings, this year we're allowed to purchase vehicles. Uh, to let you know, if it's an exempt vehicle, like a police vehicle, uh, a police vehicle cost is $56,021. The state is willing to reimburse us for that exempt vehicle, $36,850. The reason for the difference of the two prices, the $36,850 is the base price of the vehicle. And that's what's on the state contract that you can purchase the vehicle for. The other uh, amount of money of $19,171, that's a combination of getting all the radios taken out of an old cruiser, put it in a new cruiser, painting it to Granby colors. It costs $19,000 for each cruiser to do that. So if you want to save money, we can buy police vehicles, for example. Um, below that, where I got non-exempt, they only allow us up to $5,000 on a non-exempt. And that's a maximum of $5,000. What that is, that is the price of the hybrid versus the gas vehicle. They will allow you the difference of the two, up to a max of $5,000. Uh, I do know that we are putting in for a 20, 21 Ford Transit uh, this year as it goes forward. Mr. Martin and I had talked about possibly doing a lease. Nothing's come out of it. The reason we talked about that is we typically t uh, create, keep a vehicle for six to 10 years. Uh, in October, September, right around that time frame, Ford says they're going to have the plug in uh, EV Ford Transit available. So there's a difference between one July and October or so, the difference whether we want to wait for the new one or go on like that. That's a discussion we can have later, but the article when it comes through will be for $56,021. But if we wanted to do this, we could. So that's the basics on the different changes. The old library here is completed. The senior center is completed. Dufresne's Park, the Energy Committee is recommending the lights to be done at Dufresne's Park for $12,078. And that's the lights inside the um, pavilion, outside, all the outside lights. Everywhere there's a light bulb, they would be converted to LED, and that's the cost. Now, I will make a comment here. If you look at the total price, if you go back to the vehicle page down the bottom, you notice under FY20 administrative allowance, we've only allowed us uh, $2,747. We are allowed up to a 10% for administrative fees. We did not allow ourselves the full 10%. So if we go back to Dufresne's Park, this is the only one we could say not do and up the administrative fees. It's the only line item that works that way. For the highway department, uh, a heat pump, and that'll be $27,325. For the safety complex, we didn't pick out anything at all, even though the weatherization has not been done in that building. For the new library, you can see that we haven't selected anything at all as far as from the new library. That's going to be a major project within itself. One of the things you have to understand per ECM, they will not allow us more than $100,000 per ECM per building per year. So that's one reason we're kind of staying away from that one right now. The West Street School, the Energy Committee didn't recommend anything for West Street School. Do we get a status what we're going to do with it? OK, 
Okay, that'll bring us to the junior senior high school. The ones in blue are the ones that we are actually recommending for the junior senior high school. I know I said at town meeting last year that we couldn't put in for lights because we didn't have the data. And I did say that. And Mr. Steve Sullivan, the principal at the junior senior high school, did supply us the data this year, so we were able to submit it. So I want to say thank you to him for getting us the data. Now, if you look at uh, on the items for the junior senior high school, we're looking at the variable speed pumps because they give us a 6.2 year payback. We're looking at the hot water boiler controls, which will be all changed, which is a 10.4 payback. And the second floor of the junior senior high school was keeps us under that $100,000 limit, which will give us a 6.1 year payback. The payback is very important, because when you calculate all this out, all of these grants are very competitive. Last year, we didn't get a grant, because we didn't have competitive numbers. This year, we've got better competitive numbers, so hopefully we're going to get it. So with that being said, I don't know if the board wants to go with the Energy Committee's recommendation or not, or if you want to look at some stuff. Uh, as far as the lights, they were a real challenge. We did not go with the same lights that were put in the, the safety complex because we had different requirements from the school. And the easiest way that is a picture is worth a thousand words, so I can keep going on this. Now let me put this one up here. The Granby Senior, the motion sensor lights. As we know, in that building, it's concrete, and it's kind of hard to rewire everything. It'd be cost for them. If you go into the classroom, most of them only have one light switch. It's either all lights on or all lights off. The teachers had requested a possible separate control because when they use their projector up by the blackboard, all lights on or all lights off, it just didn't really work. So uh, motion sense and lighting became very particular because of the amount of people in a classroom. We don't want to have it set to a certain motion that because there's few students in it, they have to wave their hands to bring it back on. So that's where all the data that we got from Mr. Sullivan came into play. And we were looking at it. And in a way, I'm glad we didn't buy lights last year because they came out with a new light this year. Uh, we're able to eyes, we submitted a customized controlled LED lighting system to the green community people and they approved it. It's more costly than the lights that are in the safety complex, but it does meet the requirements that we were asked to get. It does give us fixed remote controls of multiple light fixtures. It will allow the classroom LED lights to illuminate continuously when motion is sense, sensed. And if there's no motion for 15 minutes, the lights go off <coughs> to conserve energy. And we are able to adjust the light sensitivity down to one vehicle, one individual's movement. So if a teacher wants to spend some time in her classroom by herself, she doesn't have to start waving her hand to put the lights back on. So in a way, we're glad that we, we didn't have to do it. And we ended up with acuity controls. They have a system called Night Air. Uh, these Night Air, they're data encrypted. They are authentic of a device, communication encrypted. They have a little, limited anonymity of devices and verification of device firmware. In other words, security. For the simple reason, these are going to be wireless. And like I said, a picture is worth a thousand words, so this thing lasts 45 seconds. Breathe easy with what's next in lighting controls and light air by Acuity Controls. Adding a lighting control network to a renovation project can be challenging, especially in old buildings. Running cables and wires can sometimes be very difficult or even impossible, causing delays and increased costs. The solution? Combining wireless technology and lighting control. 
Enlight Air is a secure, high-performance wireless platform designed for integration into various lighting controls applications and is smart building ready. Enlight Air is simple, easy to install, and aids in energy code compliance. With Enlight Air enabled fixtures, the occupancy and daylight sensor is integrated into the fixture for easy installation. The embedded smart sensor with integrated wireless communications simplifies installation since there is only one component to install in the ceiling. The fixture. The wireless battery powered wall switches offer many configurations for a range of control and scene options to complement any space and have a 10 year battery life. The fixtures easily pair with battery powered. That's really far enough to see. As you can see by the controls, the controls will be battery operated in the wall. So they do not have to be hardwired. So with the structure of a 1960 vintage school, you can see why we decided to choose this one. It, and if you go to the switches, which was on here, you can see the variety of the different type of switches. With battery powered wall switches using the clarity and have a 10 year battery life. The fixtures eat. Right there. You can see there's all different types of whatever the teacher wants. If this is what we approve, we're going to put it in for. And we, if this is what we're going for, we're going to ask Mr. Sullivan exactly what he wants in each of the rooms on the second floor. So we know it's one pole, two poles, three poles. How does he want the banks of lights configured? And then we'll work to get it done. So when it comes down for you two is to decide do you want to go with the Energy Committee's recommendations or do you want to change some of them? I can go back to the original or I can give you just the Energy Committee's recommendations. Whatever. Can we table this for now? It's 6.30 already. We're getting behind. If you guys want to table it now, that's up to you. Um, Is there a time limit that we have to make this decision? Well, it's going to be, has to be emailed out by when we leave our meeting tonight. They have to have it. Okay, so we can revisit it at the end of the meeting? Yes, if you, that's what you want to do. Is that what you want to do too, Glenn? Yeah, well, that's fine. Okay, that's yeah. fine. Okay. Give us a little more time to discuss it if we wish to. Yeah, okay. just because I have some questions, but I don't want to back everybody else up. Okay, I don't have a problem. I'll just put a line for that. Okay, we got to go into Charter Day then. Hello. How are you? Good, how are you? Crystal, good, thank you. Hi, Hello. Crystal. <laughs> yeah. Let me just finish Jara Days. I know, right? I feel like it, too. Oh, I already grabbed this this morning. Thank you. I think we're all set. Just waiting for you. Um, I don't actually know what I'm here for. I was asked to appear. <laughs> so um, <laughs> I sent a bunch of contracts to you guys to approve as far as music and truck poles. And I believe there was questions on the truck poles. So that's why I'm here to answer any questions that you may have. Uh, the only thing I noticed on the truck poles is going to be $700 more than last year, I believe. Uh, $200 more. $200. It was $5,500 last okay. year. Um, so they voted in a new president. The new president is making sure that the Mass Truck Pulling Association is legitimate, a 5013C. Um, prior to that, it hasn't been. And last year, we found out when we went to go pay them that they had lost their accreditation or didn't, with, or didn't uphold their accreditation for the 5013C. So that it was a mess trying to figure out how to pay them because we couldn't go through the association. So we had to go through the president last year of the association to pay them. And um, so they voted in a new president this year that's going to take over. She's working with the lawyers right now to make it legitimate. The name is going to change because they are making it a new 5013C. Um, but because of the um, cost for insurance, um, they have asked for $200 more to help pay for the insurance. The money that we pay them goes towards all the classes, so it pays for all the prizes for the people who compete in the truck pulls. Um, it will also pay for the sled 
um, that will have the weights on it for the trucks to pull and it will also pay their insurance. So they actually walk away with no profit from it. It all goes towards maintaining the event. Uh, when you said their name is going to change, that means the name on the contract is going to change after we sign this? It's not Possibly. Gonna so she said she's going to, um, she just notified me last week that their lawyer said that they have to change the name um, because there was a Mass Truck Pulling Association prior. Um, and now that she's going legitimate, that they're going to ask her to alter the name a little bit. So yes, it might possibly change. She's still working with the lawyers to figure that one out. Crystal, is it going for four hours or five hours? They're going to start, I do believe, at 5 p.m. And the um, police chief has asked us to end at 10 p.m. So 5 to 10, uh, no later than 10 because of the noise compliance. Okay, only because it says yeah. four in words, but then in parentheses five. five. Okay. So I was just wondering. Thank you for that. No, that's okay. So it's going to be five hours. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yep. So we... Um, the police chief did ask us not to go after 10 because some of the trucks can be really loud. Loud, the noise around Yep. Fair. Who's supplying the two tractors? The tractors are two people who um, compete in the area. So they're going to come and compete that day. Um, they're going to have gas tractors, she said, and diesel tractors. So it's not going to be an antique pull. The antique pull will be on Sunday, but the antique tractors, if they wanted to, could pull using the truck um, pulling sled on Friday okay. night. So they get two options get two during options. that weekend to pull. No, it says we have to supply two tractors, one with a bucket capable of lifting 800 pounds. So that one we do not supply. That is them. So I did clarify with that with her at the meeting, and um, we will not be supplying that. They will be supplying it. So PA, the PA system, George Randall told her, because he was at the meeting that night, that he would supply to her. But the two tractors, they will supply on their own. So that needs to be removed. Yep, from okay. the contract. So you want to just table this one until we get the new contract with the new name and the corrections? Yeah, that sounds about the best thing to do. Because there's no sense, this isn't accurate, and if we're going to have to change again, right. we're to sign it again. So a month ago it was good to go, but then she talked to the lawyers again, and as of last week, it's not good to go. So we have to wait and see Elena, what the lawyer drafts. Any idea of when? Um, no, but as long, so... I guess what the committee wants to know is do we want the, tr the truck pulls to continue? And if we do want it to continue, are we going to go with this organization or do I look for another one? So we're looking about the same price no matter who we go with. Um, some actually truck pulling associations are higher um, because they not only want you to pay for the classes, but they want you to pay for a profit for them. Whereas these, this association is not asking for a profit for themselves. They're just doing it because they like to and they have fun. Okay. Um, so that's kind of why we stuck with this association. Um, so I'll just, I can let her know obviously that we're going to table it until we get the final contract and um, hash a couple of the um, details out and go from there. I mean, that's all we really can do because mm -hmm. you can't sign a contract that's not right. finalized. Right. Right. So, but that's why it was $200 more because of the insurance policy they're going with. They actually are going to have stricter regulations so they're going to have to have caution tape put up with barrels um, nobody can be on the right side of the uh, i can't even think of the yeah the the, the track there you go the track so nobody can be on that side and if they are on that side they have to sign a waiver but they're taking care of all that on their end because it's their liability policy but she has to take pictures of the track, set up the track, send it to the insurance company. She, so she's got a lot of stuff that she's going to have to do extra. But okay. Yeah, we definitely want the truck pills. Okay. So I will let her know then. But all the other contracts for the music were good. I believe we've signed them already. Okay. Have we, Mr. Martin? I think they're all signed okay. except for this one. Perfect. Yeah. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Thanks Crystal. Crystal. Uh, Lisa Seymour from the Pioneer Valley Transit Authority. Hi. Hi. There's two of us. 
Oh, there's two of you. Okay. I'm Lisa Seymour. I'm the CFO and Sandra Sheehan is the administrator. Hello. Good evening. Hello. Welcome. Thank you for inviting us. Thank okay. you for coming. So, Mr. Martin, you going to lead this off, or? <laughs> All right. We were discussing in the report you sent us regarding the upcoming assessment. Yes. For Town of Granby. Um, there were questions regarding, number one, <coughs> is there a route that goes through Granby still? I know we did have one before. There was a, there was a mini bus, I believe, that dealt with some handicapped people at one point. And I think you had one that stopped at the old Aldrich Hall. So, so we have a fixed route, uh, the bus that comes from the university mm -hmm. on its way to Mount Holyoke College goes through Granby, and that allows the town to receive ADA transportation, which is van transportation. So we currently, the service that we provide in the town mostly is paratransit service for the elderly and the disabled within the community. And that's on Route 116? 116. 116, yeah. And that's the five college bus? That's the five college bus, the number 38. Okay. And I think the question that we had, uh, PVTA wanted $48,000, and if that's already covered by the five college contract, why are we paying the $48,000 when we don't have any other stops in Granby? Well, because you receive paratransit service. You currently receive over 12,000, 2,000 trips a year from paratransit service. We didn't know that. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. So the benefit of having the route is that it allows you to provide transportation for the disabled. And then in addition to that, PVTA provides transportation for the senior. So we do a lot of transportation for fence uh, matter, fence, fence hill matter. Yeah. We have a few clients that are there. So these people will be calling you up and, yes, and they you call come pick them up and, and we bring them to where they need to oh, go. Okay. So most of the trips that we provide are medical mm -hmm. and also um, some of them are school related, some of them are work related, but the majority of the trips are medical trips. See, we didn't know. We just saw a bill for 48000 <laughs> and we said, where's the bus stops in Granby? So uh, part of the bill is paid by uh, the universities, the five colleges. Yeah, they have so, this but, separate one. Yeah, so you send an invoice to the five colleges and they reimburse you for that mm -hmm. transportation, correct? Yeah, so of the 48 thousand you bill them for 24 so the town only pays 24. Mm -hmm. So I could give you some um, ridership information for the okay. last three years. We I don't have one copy. Well actually you can take two <laughs> otherwise I'll have nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the service uh, which is you know most of the system uh, only operates until like 8, 9 or 10. This route operates until almost 2 o'clock in the morning. Uh, usually on the weekdays to midnight and Saturdays, Thursday, Fridays, and Saturdays, it operates until 2 a.m. So you'll see the bus coming back and forth so uh, along 116. So we have uh, projections for, for this year, but it's uh, usually between 1,800, 1,900, and 2,000 passengers per year for your town. Yeah, I see in the ADA ridership has been steadily declining. Yes. Uh, ridership is declining all over the country. Uh, we're trying to determine why that is happening. And currently we're in the process of doing a comprehensive operational analysis uh, and trying to figure out which will be the best uh, method for PVTA to provide service to the residents of the 24 member communities. So we're looking at microtransit, we're looking at smaller vehicles, mm -hmm. uh, redirecting the routes, changing the times of service, the frequency and whatnot. <coughs> and this route operates every half hour. So anyone that's interested, I know there is a bus stop in Granby, um, you know. That's the five, that's the one right the off five the college. The right. five, we call that the five college. We don't right. call that the Granby one. <laughs> but it, it can bring anybody to uh, UMass or mm -hmm. Amherst, and then from then you can transfer to any routes in PVTA, mm -hmm. and it also brings you to Mount Holyoke where you could pick up a route that brings you into Springfield, the R29. Mm -hmm. So they connect at Mount Holyoke College. I need the 24,000 just to take care of that is worth it, I think. So we would like to let the individuals in the town know that we have this service. 
So if there's any way we could come to the uh, senior center and let them know so that people can take advantage of the transportation that's been offered. We can have Kathy Leonard, if you leave her your business card, she can send you the point of contact for the senior center. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we have GCAM, as you see, you're being filmed. Yes. So if you have a card, we can give that to Alex as well, the same information off that card. And Alex can post it up there so everybody can see it on camera. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, I think it would definitely be a benefit. Uh, mm -hmm. if, you, if you could stop in, maybe a couple times at least. Yes. Because um, there's probably a lot of seniors who don't, who don't realize that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, we do our outreaches to uh, just about all the senior centers. So we'll make sure that we include this one on our list. Right, because we hadn't heard about it. We didn't know where the money was going for what. <laughs> That's why we questioned it. No, no, we have to we report understand. this to yeah. uh, Oh, the state and the federal government, so we have to have information that's valid. Okay. So <laughs> we just didn't we don't have yeah. No, we're very glad that you invited us to ask questions. Okay. Yeah. Very glad. Mm -hmm. And for us, 116 is probably one of the furthest part of Granby yes, going that way, it so is. it's not much. Right, you cross it, you and you're in South Alley on the other side, so. Right. Um, yeah, we notice most of the stuff yeah. is on two, too. Yeah, we're aware of that. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you. Yep. And Enjoy that'll bring us up to the Granby School Committee. And they need the live cable. Press, press that new one, so don't. Oh, don't give those out. Minor change. You ready after the ones you sent me, the bus? Yeah. When did you send me those? Oh, I didn't. Did you send me those? <coughs> yeah, it's all. I just, I just <laughs> I know, but I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you. How are you, sir? Good, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Well, it's usually very cold. <laughs> it's not warm in here. <laughs> they jacked it up to 80 for me. <laughs> <laughs> You're not my age yet. <laughs> like colada? Oh, I might have to, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Jay, is the TV on? No. It was. That should be the screen that you got on your computer. Apparently it isn't. Kind <laughs> no, based, on that, based on that look, it's not. It sure isn't. 
There you go. Well, thank you for having us. Um, before we start, thank you for wearing stripes. And thank you, Chris, for sending out You're my welcome. email request. It's Read Across America Day today, and it's Dr. Seuss Week. And today in the Granby Public Schools, we are celebrating by wearing our stripes. Um, so before we leave, if we can get it. didn't ask for the cat and the hat. <laughs> well, it, it was hat or stripes, so I, I figured I'd stick with stripes. Oh, okay. I looked for mine. <laughs> Are you a stripe for you? Yeah. My cat in the hat hat. Oh. I was going to wear it, but I couldn't find it. That would have been classic. Um, but thank you for having us here today. Um, in a nutshell, we're very pleased to present the budget. Um, it's been a lot of hard work again, um, but we are pleased to announce that we have, um, again this year, for the second year, met the parameters that have been discussed um, and given to us by the town. Um, we're going to go into a little bit of detail. Um, one of the changes, um, again, the budget is a draft. Um, one of the changes that came in um, last week uh, was the additional in-kind. Um, and so we were able to work with that in-kind number. Um, and that was the delay in, in getting you the final, uh, final draft, if you will, that you have. Uh, the in-kind was increased uh, substantially. So we'll talk about that as we get uh, deeper into the presentation uh, this evening. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to our director of finance, business manager. I can never quite get Adam's uh, title <laughs> correct, um, but to Mr. <coughs> Tarquini. Okay, thank you, everyone. Um, again, um, I'm going to go through the side. Obviously, if you guys have questions as we're going, please stop. Mm -hmm. um, ask them. Can you hear on your phone? Can you hear on that? Alex, you get yeah. um, So you'll see this first slide is uh, just enrollment trends over the last uh, nine, ten years. Um, this is more informational than anything, but it just shows the um, decline for a few years and how we're now kind of gradually um, gaining some some students back, which plays a huge role in our um, the money that we get from the state. <clears throat> Next, just a, a pretty self-explanatory slide that 72%, almost three quarters of our budget is salary, um, and about 30% is supplies and services, and we'll get into what makes that uh, those details up as we go, um, but it's just kind of <clears throat> a visual as to, as to what we're working with. So this next slide is by department. Um, and I'll, I'll try to go slow, or if there's any questions, again, please stop me. So um, it's by department. Personnel uh, is any full-time position and or stipends. Uh, in the case of athletics, a majority of that personnel is coaching stipends, um, which are contractually uh, based. The rate increases every year. Um, also, what you will see in particularly at the high, the high school and the middle school is that uh, the substantial difference between salaries and supplies and services. Um, so we're not working with a lot at the either school and, and we're, we're doing good. We're, we are doing great. Um, so you see our total budget is the 10719123 what that number is is the entire amount of money it would cost to run our district that's minus what the town pays right correct that is just not taking into effect anything else that is all expenses that it would take to run the school department um, for FY21 that's level funded not uh, losing so that is level service so that is not so Yes, level service, level meaning service. keeping the same amount for the most part, positions and supplies and services, yes. Okay. But it does. Quick question. Yeah. That's what's supported through taxation. Correct. So that's. That doesn't include grants? No. Nope. Anything in Again, this is just what it costs to run the district. Not any offsets, not any revenues, just what it would cost to run the district if we had our own pot of money to do it. But if you had $2 million in grants, those grant dollars aren't included in this number. Correct, no. They so would offset that number. Yes, correct. This is before yep. our couponing. 
<laughs> but this, now these, this $10 million, you say it, it includes everything. So you're saying that includes the town's portion of health care, the town's portion of retirement? No, so, so again. That's what, what I'm saying. What you're saying, it's all inclusive. What this includes is every teacher that we pay, every supply and or service that it would take to run the school district. So this is your operating This budget. is our operating it's budget. It's not your total budget. It's just your operating budget. Well, it's our total operating budget. Yes. <laughs> yep, total operating budget, total budget for FY21, correct. Then you'll see in the offset column, which Chris, to your point, is there's not specifics here, but revenues, grants, um, anything that is non-general fund or local fund money is offsetting that $10 million, <clears throat> which nets to 8.708569 million dollars. Questions. What does OTPS stand? It's um, supplies and services. It's other than personnel, other than salaries. Okay. Supplies and services. I know LEA from watching your presentation means the district. That is the district, yep. Correct. So the 8.7 is what it would cost us to run after we receive. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Questions? Okay. No, not at this time. Like I said, we haven't had time to go over this with the town administrator or our finance committee yet, so this is mostly just information that we're hearing. And from what Mr. Martin says, and you said, some of this has changed, so all we have is what was emailed to us. No, this, this so this includes all of those changes. Oh, this, yep. yeah. this includes all of those changes. Okay. So there's changes back from what we <coughs> Yep, Chris had sent me the um, yeah. in-kind cost sheet on Friday. I updated the budget, updated yeah. the presentation, forwarded okay. to Chris. And that, that was forwarded to them, because you sent that to me Thursday night. Yes, as we had discussed, that, yeah, yep. So I haven't seen any change for what we printed versus what you printed yet, but I'll wait. Yeah. He said there's changes. We're going to take his word for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I haven't seen yeah. one yet. Well, so by my calculations, the changes went down, so. They did? This is what? That's the original one. I haven't we, seen the second we, one. We, yeah, we sent this. I sent that out Sunday. I didn't see it. Yeah. You were included. Yep. I'll look later. <laughs> you were saying, Adam? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In sure. <writing. coughs> Um, so these are, and, and we've discussed this at um, some length at school committee as to how we would um, describe these, and I just want to be clear. So if I'm going to skip what the line items are for now. If you go to the bottom where it says FY21 additions, to be clear, this 405000 is already included in that $10.1 million budget. It's not on top of that. It's already included in that. When we say additions, we mean compared to FY20. So this is 405000 over the FY20. Compared month. to FY20. Inclusive in that $10.1 million. 10.7? Does, does that make sense? 10.7, sorry. Okay. 10.7, yes. Lost sorry. <laughs> Inclusive, okay? Now we'll go back to the top to see where, how we got to those numbers. Um, New phone system at the Granby Junior Senior High School. Um, it's outdated, um, it's inconsistent, it's um, unreliable. Um, so this would be the cost to get a system that is um, more in line with um, 2021 communication. Questions on that? Just an upgrade. Right. Just an upgrade, correct. Yeah. Just an upgrade. Yep. Um, <clears throat> to the second section where there's FTEs. Um, so the one general education teacher, this would be at East Meadow School. Okay. It's two, and I, again, I want to be clear, so if I'm not, then just ask questions. Last year when we hired the dean at East Meadow, 
at the point of the year it was at, we filled that now vacant role with just a long-term substitute, which is funded out of a separate line. This year, what we're doing is making that a full-time position. So it's not replacing the dean, it's replacing the position that the dean left and then went into. Does that make sense? So that's putting in a new fifth grade teacher. No. So the dean, the current dean of students yep. was a former teacher. Correct. To fill that open position, we used a long-term substitute, yep. licensed teacher, but that came out of a different line in the budget. This year, we need to put that into where it needs to be, which is a teaching position. So we're gonna keep the dean, and we need to create not an extra, but the teaching position that the dean left. Okay. But then theoretically, I think the long-term sub line item wouldn't be as high next year. So okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is that, that makes sense? Yeah, just turn it into a full-time employee. <coughs> just turn it into, yeah. yes, correct, yep. Um, next, the addition of a special education teacher at the high school. That is a true addition. Um, we did not have that position last year. We would need to add it for this year. And these amounts um, are mid-scale entry for a teacher. It's where we'd hope that we would be able to hire a teacher. It's not necessarily the number that we are going to hire that teacher out. For budget purposes, we are going kind of middle of the road um, for that number. Okay. And then the five uh, paraprofessionals. Now these are um, strictly for students that need one-to-one -one services that are written into their IEPs, their IEP plans. Again, the five that's an average of about $18,000, they will probably be lower, but that's the top, top end of a paraprofessional. So the 51,000 is the mid-range, mm -hmm. and you're saying the paraprofessionals is the max? Yeah, so there's, so, the difference between a uh, entry level pair and a uh, top level pair is not that much, so I'd rather put in the most for that so we have some cushion there. Um, whereas, obviously, on the teacher scale, there's a, a discrepancy between an entry level and a veteran teacher that we would try to use the middle of the road amount. <clears throat> Questions on those? Are those paras district-wide or in one building? So I believe three of them are at the middle school and two of them will be at the East Meadow. <sighs> Sorry, East Meadow. <laughs> two of them will be at the high school. Okay, so it's district. The entire yes. District. Yep. So you said three at the high school and two at East Meadow? No. Uh, reverse. Yeah, reverse. Yeah. Yep. And the feminine hygiene, what you said on your last uh, presentation at the school on the 25th is a new requirement. Yeah, so it's a, obviously a very um, low cost, but it's more just to alert um, everybody that there's a state mandate now where we have to provide um, feminine hygiene products to any school that is educating sixth graders and up. Um, now, in every bathroom. In every bathroom. Now, we currently do supply that. It just means we're going to have to supply more. Um, and this is, in addition, there's some dispensers that we have to purchase. This is a real kind of trial period for us. Dispensers are about four, three or four hundred dollars a pop. Mm -hmm. um, so we're still talking about how we're going to kind of roll this out. Um, again, it's not really the amount. It's just the idea that this is a state mandate, that we have no choice but to... Um, roll out. And it's an unfunded one? It's unfunded, yep. <coughs> and then the last um, 150,000 under operational request, that is just the um, step 
a majority of that step increases to uh, teachers on our teacher scale. So these are going to be salary step raises? Correct. So I just, I just wanted to back and ask something? Sure. Based on something that was said a little bit earlier? Yep. Um, this isn't money where we took last year's amount and then just said 405000 more. There's there's some up and down. With yes, it. yes. Okay. There are some savings that were built into this number, yes. It wasn't just 405000 on top of last okay. year. It's just, Correct. Somebody, yep. I heard something, I think somebody said at the table before, was mm -hmm. this was last year's budget plus 405000 That's not really the case. It's, this is just stuff that wasn't on last year's budget. Mm -hmm. okay. But the bottom line of the taxpayer, you want $405,000 more. No, that's no. not accurate. That's what no. I was trying to get at. It's not okay. 105. That's not accurate. No, nope. this is just if if in the simplest terms, if you took FY20 budget and FY21 budget, there are additions in there that would total 405,000. That's not saying we're going back to the town to ask for 405,000 more dollars. If you're telling us what the additions are, why because you we've the reduced are? in some areas and increased in other areas. But there's not there's not an additional four hundred thousand dollar ask from the school department on top of what we have already in the parameter for our budget that we've. Well, what he's saying, Jay, is from FY twenty to FY twenty one, they had new expenditures mm -hmm. totaling four hundred five thousand. However, to offset that 405000 they were able to adjust other numbers, either due to retirements or things of that nature, that helped offset the $405,000 increase. Okay. Or new expenditures, not increase, new expenditures. Yeah, yeah. I just brought that up because we went back and forth mm -hmm. in our meeting as to how to label this stuff because it's yeah. very misleading if you do it wrong. Right. That's oh. why I asked, is, is this over FY20? And he said, yes, so I just put over FY20. Um, any additional questions on that? Chris, thank you for help to clarify that. <clears throat> uh, this is just for, uh, to be honest, for people that don't necessarily follow numbers, just to kind of put it in a visual um, sense of what the, how the budget is um, made for each of these locations. So um, in the light blue is personnel services, which is salaries, stipends. Um, and in the dark blue is supplies and services. And it just gives you that visual of the, um, for at least the high school and East Meadow, um, there's a big difference in those numbers. So there's gonna be a big rise in transportation? So transportation, uh, what I did a little differently this year, even though it's, a separate article at the town that is then given to the school. Last year we didn't um, show this number in our presentation. Um, so I added that this year and all this is, it's just showing what the transportation, projected transportation cost is for FY21. Which the, which the town pays for, which is not included in your budget. So the town pays for it, yeah. correct. It's outside, it's outside of our, minimum yes, that right. school. Spending, correct. Mm -hmm. um, since we're talking about that, Chris and I did talk about um, transportation. We're in a kind of a tough situation right now. We are in the final year of our transportation contract. We are out to bid, which won't go out until April 1st for a new um, transportation contract. This transportation amount here is a 10% increase to the last three years. Mm -hmm. Could be high, could be low. I'm not really sure. We won't really know that. Um, but this is a number, obviously, that we can, we can certainly um, adjust. But yes, at the end of the day, it's a separate town article. Um, and Chris and I actually talked about that th this morning. I know a lot of the schools have trans for this transportation cost because of the age of our communities nowadays. In Granby, for example, we got, on the 2017 census, 25% of our community is age 60 and over. When I talk to the town clerk, it's gone even higher. But she doesn't want to commit to a number until she sees the 2020 census. 
some of the towns have transferred this transportation cost over to the parents of the students and the towns are no longer paying for transportation. I'm just putting it out there. <clears throat> Not sure that's completely accurate. Uh, we're required to provide transportation K through six. Um, we do not, by law, have to uh, provide transportation, uh, I, I apologize, K through five, six through 12, um, and we do not have to uh, provide transpor transportation within a uh, two mile radius. So um, mile and a half Granby minute. here is a mile. Um, uh, that's policy on Granby's end. Um, so that would require some discussion, I think. Hmm. Because we're looking at the budget of all seven different departments to see how it's going to fit. Well, you're just one department of the seven to see what we have in total revenue. Because now if you look at uh, our revenue, the taxes went up, not because it was a big item, it's just that lack of revenue. So the taxes in the town had to go up this year. So we're looking at it from the total revenue aspect. It's just something we can talk about later. But we are don't we have a shrinking revenue in this state. <clears throat> any other questions? Mm -hmm. Well, I don't have any. On, on at least obviously this slide. <clears throat> so this is just a um, a comparison of FY twenty um, total budget for each uh, location compared to FY twenty one. Um, Again, it's more visual than numbers. Um, you'll see there's a big spike at East Meadow and the junior high. Again, 70% of that is for personnel and step increases for um, contractual obligations. You'll see SPED did go down compared to last year and that's because we reduced the amount of students that we are sending out of district. Um, either students have aged out or we're bringing them back into our programs within the school. Questions on that? Is it just more teachers at East Meadow versus high school? Yes. Is that what it is? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's more students in East Meadow than yeah. yeah. Um so this is uh, this is a slide as to how um the money is allocated through the state um and how we then offset it um with revenues, in kind is in there. So I don't want to go through each of these lines. It's pretty, unless you guys want me to, pretty self-explanatory. Mm -hmm. What you will notice is that the required local contribution, which is the um, responsibility essentially of the town to contribute, um, has significantly increased for Granby due to the um, new legislation for the Student Opportunity Act. Mm -hmm. And that's the proposed governance. It's not so this is the proposed governor. So that's a good point to bring up. There are still two more uh, right. versions of this budget that we will see between now the and the House budget and the Senate May. budget. Yep. So this is the proposed governor's budget. Yes. Historically, this is the lowest of those three budgets. Um, mm -hmm. Not saying that's going to be uh, how it shakes out this year, um, but historically, the last two versions of the budget are higher. And then, and then I think the other thing is, I think we've talked about this in the past, it's like which, which one do we really stick with? Mm -hmm. And I think from our standpoint, this is the one that we always use <clears throat> to this point in time. And then I think we take the adjustments as they come. Right? So, yeah, so as soon as our cherry sheet comes out, which I don't think it has come out yet, Chris, unless you have seen our new cherry sheet for FY21, is it out? Governors. Okay. The governors so, is out the most. Okay, so we will, as that cherry sheet changes, we usually update the budget based on that. Um, I know last year we had agreed that we were gonna stick to this, the House One um, approval. Um, I'm not sure if that's something we're gonna do moving forward this year, but we are reconciling based on the next two versions that are coming out from the state. Um, just as a point, the net school spending increase 
uh, that came. Uh, the requirement for the town is basically offset the increases in the in-kind uh, to retiree benefits and health care. Um, and that really was part of how the law was meant to work. Um, the recognition that the funding formula doesn't support uh, the actual costs of benefits uh, that are outside classroom instruction. I, we're looking at all the budgets in the town to get a true cost on what it's actually costing per department. And we're looking at uh, going forth, including everything in each department, whether it's health care, retirement, and everything, so we know what the actual cost of that department is. Not just the school, I'm saying every department. Because we want to know where the money is. Um, yeah. Can you speak to the override? And the only reason I bring it up, I think we're in our fourth or fifth year now of the override. <coughs> there might be people who, who didn't. Longer than that. Is it longer now? Yeah. Much longer. Much longer. Like, uh, 14, 15 years. It's been that long? Yeah. Yes. It was only good, really, for one year, but then we kept You're it. Age. You're aging yourself, Glenn. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so definitely we'll speak to it. I think there's a lot of people that, um, you know, they see it up there yep. and they may not know where it's from, what it is, because people might be thinking, uh, what's that all right about, where it came yep. from, and stuff like that, because going back to what you just said, so when that was passed, mm -hmm. a lot of people probably don't have kids in the school anymore, yep. and the new, there's the new families and stuff, so I like that, so they understand where it, where it is and what yep. it came and from. and so being that this is my second budget cycle, um, and this was implemented um, numerous years ago, if he wouldn't mind, I think Chris might be better to <laughs> talk to them <laughs> as to what it was, when it was um, voted on, and was what it actually is. That uh, 2006, 2007 was when it was brought forth. We were looking at overrides for multiple departments. Mm -hmm. uh, the school, this part of 305,000 was for the school, and then we added on, I think, another 70 for the Council on Aging budget. Uh, back then, it was said that they could have this money for at least 10 years, succeeded the 10 year period. But however, we all know that a Proposition 2.5 override is only dedicated to the purpose for which it's voted for one year. After that, it becomes just part of the regular <laughs> budget. So. so it's really part of their budget. It, when they make it, it's not really an override anymore. They just made it part of the budget. Well, well, no, we call it the override, right. but it's really an above minimum contribution. Right. That's what I meant. That's what it really mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. Well, it was an override because it still is because the people's taxes went up based on it. But the issue is it's considered above minimum. It's not considered an override. We're not going for an override every year. Every year. I, I know. But that was yeah. one reason but, why I brought it up because it, it says all right. I want people to understand where it came from, what was it, what was it about. Right. The reason we labeled it override is to so kind of keep that separate and right. for presentations. Um, mm -hmm. I also think it's important to note that minimum contribution is not what districts that, run right. with. Um, so for yeah. example, Belchertown is 13.2% over minimum. Amherst Pelham is 35.58%. South Hadley is 20.94%. Ludlow is 34.67%. Granby is 0.21. So this idea that net school spending minimum contribution is our goal um, I think we need to have a longer, larger conversation about uh, what the true costs of running the district are. Um, I'm not saying, obviously, that we can afford a Hadley at 49.32%. I know we're a completely different uh, community. Um, but to meet the parameter, we've worked really hard, and I think now the conversation can shift to what really are the costs of the district um, and, and shape that discussion off of the parameter of net school spending plus 305 because at some point we will get back to where we outstrip that because of operational costs increasing mm -hmm. contractual obligations that will then impact us having to cut into instruction teachers in classrooms programs for kids well that's exactly like we're looking into what does it actually cost the <coughs> department to run including the items that aren't in their budget that are in like a general area whether mm -hmm. it's uh health care contributions, uh, retirement contributions, whatever others are. We want to know the true cost of that department. So 
as you probably heard me say, on my eight-year platform, if two and a half percent, if we increase our budget, we will max it out, and there will be no more tax increases. It'll just be a matter of what are you going to cut. And we're trying to get a handle on it sooner than later because it's more beneficial not only to the residents but to the employees of the town to know what's going on. Yep, but I would like to reiterate, minimum contribution shouldn't be the goal of the town of Granby. That should be the base we build on? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I understand that, but then okay. also we have to look at, on the other stuff that looking at, do I want to buy an ATV or do I want to uh, fix a dam which is poor and the foundation is ready to go, which would eliminate some houses and businesses? Which way do you think I'm going to choose? Well, unfortunately, what I've heard often in yeah. watching the mm -hmm. meetings is we're only obligated to net school spending. Minimum contribution is our only obligation. Um, and mm -hmm. I think we need to have uh, a deeper conversation about that and, and, a, and a deeper understanding of really what that means. Because the obligation to minimum contribution um, is an inaccurate uh, statement. As far as I'm concerned, it's whatever the town voters vote in. Whether you, they give you one, two, three, or four million dollars, or they take it away, that's up to the, the town voters. What I, I, I would also say, too, though, to, to the point that you're kind of making, uh, a big draw to move to any town, any city, is the schools, without a doubt. And I think we, we, we've seen that over the past uh, two years uh, <coughs> since East Meadow's been built. The difference, the people you yeah, know, starting to move absolutely. back in, because in a while there, you had people who were leaving mm -hmm. the area to go to mm -hmm. different schools. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's definitely a, a big draw, and I can, I can speak to myself. I guess now I was reminded how many years ago it was, <laughs> but um, you know I had two kids that went through the, the schools, and that's you know you know the past uh, 15 years, uh, you know things have things have changed, and I mm -hmm. think like I said one of the reasons why I moved to Granby, um, you know 20 plus years ago, was the schools. Mm -hmm. you, you look at that, and I think that says a lot for any. Uh, a lot of families that move to Granby that have younger kids or older kids, that's what they're looking at, what the school, the value there. Hypothetically speaking, would you do it again if you had to do it now? Yes. I mean, you, you look at some of the newer homes that are being built around, around town, and obviously there's not as many as we'd hope, but they're all three and four bedroom homes. They're not little homes that are being built right now. And most likely, most of the people are moving into those are, are families. <coughs> Which will put another strain on our school budget. Well, there's only six houses built in Granby last year. Hopefully, more will be built this year. And six houses is a whole lot to be built in the entire year. Yeah. And our, our, our downside right now, and you, you speak about, uh, and I'm just going to make reference to you, you spoke about where we are um, with our, our funding and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You know, because of Westover and all those houses that left off mm -hmm. our tax roll has impacted this town greatly. greatly. Yes. I, I agree entirely. We, we, have not, we have not recovered from it. We have not. And we, it's going to take a long time, even if we do. I mean, you figure how many homes came off a tax, our tax base, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, <laughs> we're in the, we're so the 40s, the 50s. We're, right, but the bottom line we're looking at is how much revenue do we have where we're going to put it. That's all I'm saying. No, and, and I agree. And I think it, just to be fair to what's being said, I think, you know, you look away, you look for reasons why people move into an area. And one of the top reasons usually is schools. schools. Mm -hmm. And while you see, as you talked about earlier, <coughs> a lot of your schools that are around us, what how much their towns, um, you know, go above and beyond. And then I'm, obviously some of those towns could afford it. I'm not saying that, I'm not well, they all putting that there. They, go, they can all afford it, they wouldn't give it. Just like we give what we can as well. But that, that's the point I'm making. So, the, but they're also investing in it. You know, we, you know, mm -hmm. again, we can't compare ourselves to a hat. Like we don't have a, we don't a route have a nine. nine. Right. So, but I think it's just <laughs> no, they have industry. We don't. You know, they have industrial parks. Not really. They do have some. We have none. So. Well, let's work on that. Which is off topic. Okay. So, so moving on from that override, um, you'll see the, the transportation. So it's regular transportation, special education transportation, and athletic transportation. Um, these are projected costs for FY21. Again, to be clear, it's a separate town article voted on. Um, it then is included in the school's budget. Um, so taking all of that into consideration, 
I don't want to call it revenue, but the amount of money that the schools would receive is $11.1 million based on state funding, um, the override, and the transportation article, it's $11.1 million. Does that make sense how we get to that mm -hmm. number? Um, we then reduce that number by the in-kind amount. Um, mm -hmm. And again, I got this from Chris on Thursday. Um, this is about 180 or so more than last year, give or take. Um, and as Cheryl mentioned, our net school spending required town contribution was increased by about that much, so, it, so it's a wash. Um, but we take that in kind. Um, the net of that is the $8.7 million that you see. It says adjusted town allocation. How I like to use that or describe that is that is the money that we would get from the town that's that's our allotment from the town that is the amount that the school department then has to balance their budget to so that's what we would be asking that's, the town for yes okay and how does that compare to last year's so this is about a three and a half between three and a half four percent increase to last year a majority of that increase is due to the um contractual personnel obligations, step increases. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Questions on that? We then take revenue, which could be, um, not can be, which is circuit breaker, um, school choice, mm -hmm. grants, state grants, federal grants, um, private grants. We then use that money um, to offset the total budget to then get to what the town would give us at $8.7 million. So you will see LEA budget, that $10.7 million is, again, what we saw at the beginning. That's the total cost that it would cost the schools to run and operate, total operating budget for FY21. Is there a reason the town slash school doesn't charge for preschool? Because we applied in 2015 to be reimbursed under Chapter 70, so we get reimbursed from the state under Chapter 70 instead of for all. charging for all. Is that because we're a peer? It was just a decision that they made. Okay. Yeah. Because I know, like my niece and stuff, mm -hmm. she's paying <clears throat> 3400 dollars a year per child yep. for three days a week, only a half a day per week. Mm -hmm. When they did the study, just, the just prior, <laughs> prior to me, um, they did the study and calculated that um, for the amount of time it took to um, generate invoices and um, recoup, um, mm -hmm. it was easier and more beneficial, really, to just have to apply under Chapter 70. Um, and the, the revenue grant offset amount, the, the a little over $2 million, again, it's a projection. It's based on... Um, what we received this year, projections on at least for school choice and circuit breaker for next year. Um, there is a change in the circuit breaker um, formula this year that we are now allowed to include um, at a district transportation for um, circuit breaker. So I don't want to get into it, but just circuit breaker, just a, a quick kind of overview on exactly what it is. They set a four times foundation per pupil amount as the threshold for circuit breaker. Adam, I'm going to ask you yeah. to explain circuit breaker. Yeah. Because yeah, as I said, yeah, people watch this whole and they're probably certainly. asking what mm -hmm. is the circuit breaker. Mm -hmm. So again, there's changes coming. So the amount of circuit breaker, the, the threshold for circuit breaker this year is based on the FY19 foundation. Um, Back up the train. It's for special education tuition. Yes. Yep. Oh, yes. So, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Special education yes. tuition. So, um, any services that, that um, anything that, any monetary value it costs to educate, send um, a special education student at a district, a paraprofessional, a bus monitor, transportation, all goes into a cost for circuit breaker. Mm hmm Makes and sense. The, and the state doesn't fund 100 percent every year. So we're gonna, yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll get to that. Correct. Goals. Yep. Correct. They set a foundation amount mm -hmm. for easy numbers. This is not what the foundation amount is. For easy numbers, we'll say that the foundation amount is forty thousand mm dollars. -hmm. Okay. 
you add up all of the services for a special education student, anything above that $40,000 is then reimbursed through Circuit Breaker at 75%. And so that percent you need, we're responsible for the first 40? Plus, plus, plus the, the 25. Plus. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it depends on what the state has for funds and what they decide the percentage is, which could change any time. Correct. So in the past, they say 75%. Um, mm -hmm. It's usually around 72%. Last year was 74.5% they ended up reimbursing. Mm -hmm. um, so again, a student cost, the state says 40,000, one of our students costs 50,000. Of that 10,000, the state would reimburse us um, $7,500. Makes mm -hmm. sense. The tough thing about circuit breaker is we file that in um, June of our current fiscal year and we do not see that until the next fiscal year mm -hmm. okay so you're yeah. getting money on past services right that's how they're planning for the following year exactly yep and good practices in that circuit breaker account or a school choice revolving account best practice is to have one year arrear in that account mm -hmm. okay. this year in the past added district transportation was not included in that circuit breaker calculation there is new legislation that now special education transportation will be included in that circuit breaker calculation which now might bump a student that didn't qualify into where they would qualify thus having a reimbursement to the school district so we okay. we will see an increase in circuit breaker we don't have many students that are at a district but we would see an increase compared to last year in circuit breaker okay but that won't be until that will be until so yes correct year. Year. gets a little confusing questions <clears throat> this is just um again a, a chart to take the numbers from the last slide and just kind of give you a visual as to how um percentage wise what makes up our the budget Next slide is just a FY20 versus FY21 uh, comparison. Again, you'll see the required local contribution is where um, there's a significant increase. And that's required local as determined by the state? Correct, yeah, there's a formula that goes into, the, into that. Mm -hmm. um, And I can certainly send our Chapter 70 workbook uh, to you guys just so you can see the back of my exactly. That's why I did never do it, but. Yeah. It's, 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 you know, we have a lot of stuff we do with state formulas. <clears throat> and we know you never get 100%. So we have to plan it on accordingly when we do the other articles on how much we got to pay 20% more, 25% more. Mm -hmm. So we understand that. But mm -hmm. just for the people watching, we know what the state formula is, but that's not the actual cost. That's all I'm saying. Correct. Um, next slide is just, um, this is actually how our Chapter 70 money is um, calculated. Um, so that you'll see classroom and special specialist teachers is $3.5 million. There's a, again, a very um, complicated formula that goes into this. I'd be happy to share with anybody if you'd like to see it. Um, but this is just a overview of, of how Chapter 70 for Granby is compiled. Questions? Yeah. Um, next slide is just a comparison of FY20 versus FY21 um, foundation budget required uh, local contribution, chapter 78, and then the required net school spending. Just a, a comparison from 20 to 21. So you noted that a lot of the 
the uh, most of the difference right now is just based on contractual obligations yes. to yep. increase. So mm -hmm. uh, besides that, you're almost running the schools on the same budget as you did last year. Yep. Well, they had additional FTEs, and on the uh, budget that I saw on the 25th of February, there was other line items they added to the local budget that haven't appeared on here. Because of the in-kind increase. Because of the in-kind. So once the, once the in-kind was provided by Chris, we then reduced to then balance again. So mm -hmm. um, yep. there would so have been additions that we... There were stipends for intramurals at the high school. <coughs> uh, there was an additional math teacher for Granby Junior Senior High School um, and uh, various other. There was some athletic requests. Uh, yeah, fencing. They, want, they want fencing. And, uh, they want ATVs. And, and ATV, a U which actually transports um, people because we don't have access to the backfields. Mm -hmm. We do um, give uh, use those vehicles to allow access for mm -hmm. anyone who might be ADA compliant, necessary, or elderly, mm -hmm. um, and also if there's an injury. Mm -hmm. But it was removed. It was removed. Yep. yep. So you you've got that covered now. Those requests are already covered. They were removed. They're, They're removed. We'll, we'll revisit them. Um, it might be a true cut. It might be something that um, okay. if we have surplus in this year's budget, we can purchase. I, we, For the sake of the in-kinds, we removed them and kind of haven't gone forward with what we will do with them as of yet. Again, the last slide is just a comparison of Chapter 70 um, over the last five years. Again, it's a very... Complicated formula. Um, I'd be happy to discuss it in detail with anybody at a separate time. But uh, again, this is just a kind of a comparison as to the increases or decreases over the last five years. I don't have any comments, questions. concerns. No, until we look at the the grand scale of the picture and what we have for total revenue and how we can divide it between the seven departments and what's the priority. Well, I, I want to say thank you because I know a lot of time and effort goes into preparing this budget. So, mm -hmm. you know, definitely thank you for thank you, for thank you. presenting it, but also putting it together. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate yes. the Two things before you leave. Yeah, again, it's it, some Pictures. people aren't numbers people, mm -hmm. some people aren't yeah. visual, so I try to put, um, but I'll make it clear any additional information that you guys would like to have, email me, mm -hmm. come down. Okay. My, my, my office is always open. Um, if you'd like more details, I can send you stuff. We can talk about it. Any, mm -hmm. any communication you would like. Just two things. Um, <coughs> I imagine you're going to leave now that it appears. Uh, well, the thing we were talking about, lights, does that look like it'll fit your needs? I'd have to speak with Stephen and John okay. Sullivan, but yeah, okay. it'd probably meet like we have been, just to review the final. Right. For mm -hmm. the simple reason is there's no way you can hardwire it in that building. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and you wanted to say something, Steve? Yeah, I have a couple of questions if they would entertain. Okay. Uh, no particular order. Um, on your athletics uh, budget, uh, you're showing probably 150 together with $50,000 in transportation. Mm -hmm. um, you're showing an offset of 30000 Am I correct in understanding that would be athletic fees charged for parents? Correct. Uh, so you're basically, if you do that, and just for the record, that we collected about $50,000 in fees last year. So what, I what was that number? 50000 yep. roughly. Mm -hmm. So you're being conservative with the collections for this ensuing year? Yeah. I mean, I, again, they're... This number, especially the offset number, will change. It's a moving target, but okay. yes. Have you, as a school committee, considered uh, increasing fees? Um, that's not something we've discussed, but I know that's something that I don't know which way to turn. So I apologize. <laughs> I know that's something Ali, the athletic director, has been kind of taking some inventory on, you know, Just outside, you know, other districts to see what they do charge. Um, on the transportation contract, when do you anticipate getting the contract numbers? So the bid won't go out until April 1st. April 1st yep. it's, it's been held up. So real quick on that, it's uh, between, it's Granby, Belchertown, and Ware are all on one bid. 
um, some of the bid specs got held up in another district, which now pushed out um, when that bid will be published. So April 1st will be published. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, on your uh, FY21 additions total of the 405,000, um, looks to me, and I certainly can't add it you now, uh, looks like there's about a $45,000 variance. Is that just, uh, were you just highlighting the, the um, categories? So, you're saying the 405 is not really 405, it's four? Yeah, well, like I said, uh, the total of all the individual items, I don't believe it comes up to that, so I'm just bringing okay. that to your attention. Thank you. Um, I will update and resend. In your, you briefly mentioned uh, some of the capital expenditures. Um, are those, do you have a total amount of capital expenditures that are under 25,000? And is that number included in your OTPS? So to be clear, what capital expenses? Uh, the ATV you just mentioned. So that's, we eliminated that from oh, the budget. Did. Yep. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. So do you have any other capital expenditures less than 25,000? The phone system, okay. which is about thirteen thousand dollars. Again, that's the uh, you know quote that we <coughs> a recently received quote. It's about thirteen thousand um, dollars. No. Um, on your offset column, mm -hmm. uh, can you provide detail how you break that off from uh, grants, revenue, special revenue, etc.? I can provide that. I'm not going to do it right now, no, but no, I can I certainly provide that. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Mm -hmm. To the committee or to whoever wants it. Okay. Well, we share. Okay. I mean, just like our finance committee, we're going to mm -hmm. take their advice as well. So I'll send it through Chris. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, school lunch deficit. Um, <coughs> I'm sure you're designating for um, funding any deficit you might have at the end of the year, and how are we doing on school lunch? Um, so, as we've done in the last few years, I believe it's $16,000. Um, and that's something we can certainly uh, revisit as we get closer to the end of this year. Um, but I'm not prepared to talk about school lunch that's, tonight. I'm not, yep. wouldn't expect it. I'm yep. just bringing up the question. Mm -hmm. um, you obviously must estimate out your revenues uh, for grants, special revenue, and other revolving funds, for example. And uh, you're offsetting those to um, fund your overall budget. Do you have projected fund balances for each of those uh, at the end of the year? If they, yes, and I can provide that again through thank you. Chris. Yep. And last question, and thank you for uh, bearing with me here. <laughs> uh, do you have any capital items that you're requesting on the articles uh, that are greater than 25000 this year? That was my question. I didn't, I didn't hear it, so. No, I was I had been waiting oh, to ask you. Okay. <laughs> you know, no. no. Okay, thank you. Can we be dismissed? <laughs> Class is still in session. <laughs> um, I don't have any more questions. I've, asked, I've asked my questions. Is there things that are not going to be finished, like that moon with the asbestos and stuff, that you're going to need to require additional funds that you don't already have? It's in the budget. It's in this year's budget? It'll no, be it's asbestos, we, that was one of those that we removed from FY21, because our plan was to take care of it over oh, the summer. Right. Um, right. That's but, why I was asking yeah. the question. But now, um, again, we have not talked about this, but the hope would be to use surplus funds from <coughs> this, this year to yeah. take care of that. Okay. But it's not been discussed in detail. We haven't even presented that to school committee. Again, this was, um, we removed this as soon as we got in kind, balanced, and got to these numbers. Is there any plans for FY21s for doing any renovations, upgrading the junior senior high school? No. Nothing at all? No. I think there's a realization that the work group to investigate and move a discussion forward about Granby Junior Senior High School really needs to take precedent now going into FY21. I would agree before any tax dollars are spent on the Junior Senior High School, we should find out exactly what is the real cost. Because if I go back to my spreadsheet, just on energy alone, <clears throat> upgrades is almost six hundred thousand dollars, and that's not counting yep. any of the other retrofit. It's just energy upgrades. Yep. I think it was important to get the roof done, which we're yeah. very appreciative of. Keeps mm -hmm. the structure sound. 
Um, but everything else, I think, really needs to be a community discussion. Mm -hmm. Because the question is, how much money are we going to put in that building? We don't really know how much it needs. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. Well, it's like anything. Uh, unless I know the price of it, I'm not going to vote on it. You know Thanks. me by that. Thank you. That's the same same thing. West Street's the same thing. You don't give me no prices. Yeah. Thank, no you. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, it. Cheryl. Thank you, Thank you Mike. Yep. Okay, let's get back on our sheet here. Thank you. Okay, it's been citizen participation time. Okay, uh, we have one citizen participation. No, she's here. Yeah, Linda's not oh, here. Linda. Get the hot seat should be all warmed up by now. I get pretty warm back there. <laughs> okay, it's Linda Unwin, 53 Center Street. I have a petition here, which <laughs> you didn't have to do that. <laughs> which I'm pretty sure you're going to say no to, but it's from the townspeople. They want to have a vote on anything over net school spending. They feel it should be brought to the town and let the people decide. It's our tax dollars. They should, you know, we feel we should have a vote for it. Everybody else does, every other department in Granby operates that way, why shouldn't they? Especially now when I'm hearing there's a good possibility you're gonna do away with the high school. Well, I don't think that was it. That wasn't that was said. It wasn't said, oh. it's coming. Um, what would we do without a high school? Regionalize. We can't. No, no one. But wants they, that. barring that, February 25th, you had $726,000 in what he called their surplus. The parking lot yeah. needs to be fixed, as the student representative had asked at the school meeting. And they said, we've put it into next year's budget. The asbestos room, now it's whether they are or not. If they've got that much money left over, they shouldn't be asking us for a dime. They've got money to fix those things. They've got money to put into that high school. I know you felt if we did that, the children would suffer. Well, they are suffering. The kids at the high school are suffering. Unlike the children at East Meadow, they got all Chromebooks and the high school gets a bathroom with no ceiling. It's not equal. And if it's supposed to be every child every day, then you're excluding 7 through 12. It's only East Meadow that everybody seems to be most concerned with. When you talk to the people, they want to vote on it. I know it was brought up before by a member of the board, and it didn't get second. So the town got together and said, well, let's sign a petition and see if they'll accept it then and give us the opportunity to say what we want. I mean, you get to vote on everything else. Okay, how many names are you petition? Right now, I've got 33. Okay, so that would be action, a vote by the board. By the board. If not, I know I can go back and get more and come back and override. Well, I would like to take it under advisement for right now. We've just been given a whole bunch of information oh, from I know. the school. And I did bring up that a while ago, and it didn't get seconded, as you said. But I think in fairness to everybody, before the vo board took a vote on that, we should digest some of this school data to see wh who's on first, what's on second. I mean, if you... Do you guys want to do a vote on that next uh, select board meeting on our petition? Or I, I just give some time. Let's just digest some of this stuff. What do you say, yeah, Glenn? I'm okay with that. I'm going to ask that you wait for the April meeting. And reason being because it will not be here at our next select board meeting. Oh, okay. okay. That, we have no, I have no problem with that at all. What meet? What, April, what? because he won't be here for the first Monday in April? The first Monday in April. 
in yes. Oakland? Okay. Yes, first one in April. Okay. I, I have no problem because so. we need to digest a lot of this stuff here. And we need to talk to the town administrator, the treasurer, and our finance committee mm -hmm. to see where we stand on all this. Because as you heard, a lot was thrown at us tonight. I didn't mean literally thrown, but it was given to us to digest. Oh, I know. I was sitting back there going, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. So. But it's just that people are getting tired of it. Okay. You know, I mean, you can't sit there with that kind of money and not be doing anything, especially if they call it a surplus. <laughs> I, I completely understand. I mean, we went through it last year when they had a 300 and something, and they didn't turn it back in the town. They spent it. Okay. What the exact numbers is for this year, there's estimates from 600 to 700 to 800. Nobody really knows until the I'm year I'm only ends. going by the figure that was given right. February 25th. I'm just 25th. saying, until the end of the year is done and all the bills are paid, we won't know exactly what the surplus is. Okay. We, get, we can only give you numbers on today to date on what is in the account and what has been spent. Is, is your concern the surplus or is your concern more what they're doing with the surplus? It's a combination of it all. They're the only ones that don't have to be held accountable like every other town department, okay? And I know, oh, well, we won't let them have. If they're asking for a legitimate thing, I don't think a town's going to say no. But we don't know what's going on in there. And if you ask questions, go back and look at all the school committee meetings. Mm -hmm. You ask questions, you never get an answer, right? Leads people to say, something's not right okay now I do know they bought the Chromebooks but they didn't do anything 9 through 12 is what the colleges are looking at mm -hmm. for students to come out mm -hmm. why wouldn't you focus a lot of that towards them they should have gotten the Chromebooks instead of carrying 60 pound backpacks well I, I can speak to that myself being a Microsoft certified systems engineer I can tell you the junior senior high school doesn't have the infrastructure to s support all those devices the New school does has all fiber optics and it can support the devices. I can tell you the kids do pretty good with their phones, though. You see them, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the thing of it is, is that's another thing that has to be considered. Is but it's just that I don't think as much attention has been paid to that high school. Oh, I don't think anybody's going to disagree with you on that. And so, if you sit in any kind of meeting and you hear anything about a surplus, it's like, so why wasn't it? Well, you heard me ask if they were going to do anything. With their money for right. this year and or I guess next year the for the school, for the junior senior high school, and they said no. Yeah, I, I know. Specifically asked that question. Well, we talked about the asbestos removal in that room, and they said they would try to do it with the money they had left over, but there was no guarantees. Yeah, so no, but you just said no, but they didn't. Mention but they did something. say no after when he said, "Do you have any further plans?" Right, and they said right. no. That's what, that's what okay. I was talking about. They also said that it was time to look at the building itself right. before we start putting money into it. And I don't disagree with that at all. Right. Because I mean, look at we got eight or nine more years to pay on the West Street School roof. I know. Don't look at anything. No, it's just a fact. I know. And that's and why the taxpayers are saying, yeah. you know. We if we know. can hold them accountable like every other department, then we only have ourselves to blame. I can't put blame somewhere else. And I, I don't disagree, but right now we need to. Okay, I so I'll be back April 1st. Maybe I'll have more signatures. I don't know if it's April 1st. What is no, it? Um, I can tell you. Yeah, no. First Monday. First Monday. First, April, first, yeah. first Monday. Yeah, okay. It is April 6th. April 6th. Okay. Well, at least it wasn't April Fool's. Right? Let's see, yes. <laughs> April 6th. Okay. Okay. I'll right. be back. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, that paper you want to hand down to Chris, please? Uh, Steve, get the door, please. Um, <laughs> no one's since we tabled the uh, discussion on the Energy Committee, you want to go back to that or just keep going and right going leave it for the end? Um, we can go back. I'm okay with that. I just you, didn't you want, want everybody to get behind. Go back now. Sure. Okay. Yeah. We're there. Um, hold on. Let me pull it, Jay. Thank you. 
asking, I particularly don't care what order we do it. I'm just asking what do you want next. No, no, let's go back and check it off the list for that. Question that I had, Jay, was. Yeah, um, I just pulled it up. Go ahead. With the um, LED lighting. Okay, you're in the you're in the Granby. I'm in the high school. Yep. Okay. Um, so it says that the LEDs have a 10-year lifespan. What are Where we talking? does talk it say the 10-year lifespan? It said it in the video. No, the batteries that go in the, the wall. The batteries, right? right. The batteries. So, yeah. So how much is the battery replacement? Do we know how much the batteries cost when we have to replace them? No, we didn't even look into the cost because uh, it's ten years from now, I don't want to get the cost. Not same, only but that, but to, to dig into but the concrete to, to put the hard wiring yeah. would be dramatically more right. costly than that. Well, yes, I understand that to wire anything in that building would be, I don't know, a Herculean task. It, it, you almost need to build the sub wall inside of it to put it around to put there. Around it. Yeah. Your labor alone would outweigh the cost of the batteries. That would right, imagine. that's why we didn't even consider that once we found out that was available. And here's the other thing you think about, though, too, where you're talking 10 years from now, mm -hmm. even, even if you had to buy new batteries and they last another 10 years, that's 20 years. How do we know what a high school is going to be? In 20 years from now, it could be a new high school. That's the point I'm making. So 10 years from now, it could be a different story. 15, 20 years from now, it could be a different story. No, we did not look into the cost of the batteries, to be honest with you. If you want us, we can look into the cost. But once we saw the savings of doing it wirelessly with battery. And will the infrastructure support that? Is there enough yes. bandwidth? It will not touch the bandwidth at all. It will not? How no. is that going to? They will. They have their own protocol from the battery switch to the light fixture. They're not going over the... Um, internet structure or the uh, bandwidth of the school. Think about your garage door opener from the right. outside pushing it. I just wanted to make sure that it yeah. wasn't. Yeah. No. Okay. It was, I would never go with that thing because they don't have enough as it is. Well, that was, my, that was a concern. They don't have enough. They don't. And they can't put any more boosters. Well, the bottom thing is the boosters are immaterial in that building. They got some wiring that will only push 100 megabytes per second through it, and they're paying for 500 megabytes per second. It's like having a hose a half inch by three quarters by an inch. You're only going to get so much volume through. I don't okay. care what pressure you put on it. You're only getting, you're so, only much getting so much volume. You're only getting so much. Okay. Was there any other questions? Um, I can call up this one if you want. Because I, we did it in two ways. This one here is what the Energy Committee recommended. If you would like to look at this and then go back and look, and see if you want to make any changes. It is up to you. But 200,000 is our max threshold, and we're only allowing ourselves 2,747 in administrative costs. Mm -hmm. Now, with that being said, there is a possibility that we might have to come back to town meeting at some time because we're not doing the full 10% administrative fee and do an article to help do the reports and everything required with this grant. Okay. And so, so you may, I'm sorry. No, go ahead, Glenn. So you may need more money for administrative fees? We generally run about 10000 a year for administrative fees, roughly, depending on how much the energy committee can do itself versus we have to get an outside uh, from PVPC because we just run out of right. time. Because yeah. we got so. suspenses. And if we don't meet the suspenses, we're not eligible for the next year. So that's a lot of thing that determines what we're going to put in the consultant's hand and what we're going to do ourselves. Okay. And you said these were competitive grants, correct? These are competitive grants, yes, they okay. are. Okay, so being that it's grant funded, we have to front the money and then? Actually, no. No, okay. On this one, no. Uh, if we get awarded a green community grant, they have what's called specific vendors by Mass DOER. When we get awarded it, our vendor would be energy source. Okay. Okay. What happens is, and Chris can relay it to you. We have to go through different stages of inspection when they do it. When it's inspected, then the state gives us the money. Then we send it to energy source. Okay, so we don't have to put anything up up front. No, we put none of none so of the. So if we time. don't get the grant, we can not. We don't. But we like last year, we didn't get the grant. Okay. We put nothing up front. We had no article for it. No nothing. Okay, that was my that was my. Okay. Second major question. That's fine because I understand you're not on the energy committee. You don't see this going nope. back and forth. I don't. So 
So basically we're looking, Energy Committee is recommending the heat pump at the highway department. The, at the junior senior high school, we're recommending doing the second floor lights, the hot water boiler controls and the variable speed pumps, and in Dufresne's Park, the lighting. That's the, and that'll keep, that'll bring us up to a total of $197,253. How old is the boiler? It's the controls, it's not the boiler. No, no, I know that. I know it's the controls, but is it worth replacing controls if the boiler is? Well, well from what I'm told, it's not functioning correctly. Okay. Well, they did say the fitness, efficiency of the boilers were, were good, right? 83%, yeah. and it would take a 95.6 payback on you. The boilers are 83% efficient, and the payback would be over 95 years. To replace them, right? So, but it's the controls they are saying that is bad to manage it. Okay. Uh, I've been told. I don't want us to use the word hotwired, but you know what I'm trying to yeah. say. They've got to bypass some things to get well, them. So it's not operating correctly. Could right. Be turning on, shouldn't be turning so on. So, if we in the energy committee can do an energy improvement at the same time fixing something, we'll do that. But we just don't fix something for the sake of fixing it if it doesn't have an energy improvement that's competitive to put in the grant process. Right, I guess, I guess my question is how old is the boiler? Uh, I'd say 1960 when it was built. Yeah, Both of them. There's, on, on a school, they have a redundancy. What is their lifespan? It's like the life, I got, I'll tell you the what, thing that we're using. <laughs> Thanks, Glenn. <laughs> yeah. The thing that worries me the most is those oil tanks in the ground. If those things ever leak, we got a, a massive cleanup. That's okay. You, you can knock a 1960 building, but we got a 1940 building at West Street. I'm the knocking same. on wood. <laughs> so. Don't jinx us. Okay. Again, I plan for the worst and hope for the best. Mm. Sometimes hoping is not. I, we don't have a choice a lot of times. I wish you start planning for the best. Yeah, now, plan planning for the best, best will be in a <laughs> whole real will worst. be in a whole real quick if I plan for the best. Plan for the best, prepare plan, for the worst. I, I plan for the worst and hope for the best. Nope. Because that way I'm not going back to the taxpayer and say I need more money. I'm gonna say I did a better job than you thought. Here's some Do you money know what back. The lifespan of a boiler is? At least fifty years. That's what you build. No, that's what you build the building for. Yeah. Was yeah. It 50 yeah. years. 50 years. So it was. For 50 year is this the original? Yes. Yeah. So and it's a 60 year old. So you got 10 mm -hmm. years more than what it was probably designed to go for. And and it's redundant too. It's got two. No, that, that's that's the only yeah. guide, guideposts I can give you. Yeah. Building, no, that, building that's for 50 years. That's fine. You're right. So I guess my question is, if we've gotten 10 years more out of this boiler, mm -hmm. are the boiler controls boiler specific? To be perfectly honest with you, the Energy Committee is looking on getting rid of those boilers starting in the year 2022. Okay, so even though it's grant money, if we're looking to get rid of them. Okay, let me put it to you I'm this confused. way. Remember I'm confused. Remember when we had that about solar block on the vertical solar yes. on the side of the building? Yes. That would pay for mini splits that we said that would produce heat. Yeah and air conditioning. What we'd like to do in the year 2022, and this is not set in stone, this is just preliminary at the Energy Committee meeting. We'd like to look at the south side of the building and take two classrooms on the first floor, two classrooms on the second floor. Then on the north side of the building, two, two classrooms on the second floor and two classrooms on the first floor. And put the solar block up, because it's supposed to do 19,000 kilowatts on the south wall. If that can produce enough electricity to heat and cool those rooms. We wouldn't need the boiler. You got it. Okay. But we would want to pick uh, two rooms on the first, two rooms on the second, on the south and north side to see how it where actually works. And if it does work, we can eliminate all the hot water boilers completely. You like that idea, Steve? Yeah. And it's renewable energy. There's okay. grants out there for it. So it would help us in our greenhouse gas and not burning of fossil fuels. Because the governor says by the year 2050, nobody's going to be burning fossil fuels in the state of Massachusetts. I won't be- Not even in my home. 
That, that not even in your home. That is correct. Okay. Um, I, I agree with you. But for 2050, I don't think I'll be around. So are the controls on 100%, 75% necessary? According to the state well, energy auditors, they selected the controls, the amount to put in. Okay. And, 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 and I know Jen is pretty much saying, it, are we putting these in if we're not going to need them? Right. Are we wasting $26,000 of grant But we don't know if we're going to need them or not. That's all future right. what else. That's what I'm saying. I, I'm told the current controls are not working properly. Right. So I, I'm also told on the new library, they got a problem with condensation falling on the books and everything else. That's something we're going to have to look to address to next year because there's not... They, they dropped it from 250 to 200, so we're doing the best yeah. we can with 200. So we're trying, as I stated, if the energy committee can show a reduction in energy and at the same time fix a problem, we're trying to kill two birds with one stone. Right. And the energy control, the boiler controls, fits in that criteria. No, I, I agree. I mean, it makes sense for these, at least for the next two years, not at least next two years, but it's, it, it, it's going to create, it's going to fix a problem we're, I'm we're currently having. I'm just afraid it fixes a problem in June and the boilers, the boilers give up the ghost in September. No, the, the boilers are overhauled, have been overhauled. The energy engineers have now looked at it and said they're 83% efficient and there's no problem with the boilers. Okay. And to let you know, there's two boilers in the boiler room because the schools are required to be have redundancy only one boiler is required to, to heat run. that school yeah. but it's got two because it has to be redundant okay i'll give you an example so you have two engines one lasts 100,000 miles the other one lasts 200,000 miles same exact engine that's how you drive it well, you drive, I, take, you I maintain, maintain it. it. So if you maintain these the properly, they'll, they'll, they'll last longer. We're just not like anything. known for maintaining. Well, if you look at the military, we've got B-52s that were made in the 50s that are still flying. But they maintain. Yes, you are right. But, but the point I'm making, they, that I would say they're being maintained correctly and properly because 83% efficiency is pretty good for boilers like that. That old, I agree yeah. with you. Is that from the over? Is that since the overhaul, or is that? That's do we have me measured anything? after the overhaul. Okay. That was measured. I think it was three years ago. Okay. They had, they put actual data loggers on the equipment, so those are actual numbers. They're not estimates. Okay. That makes me feel a little bit better. Okay. I also think too. I mean, with the new roof project that they did too, you know, eliminating a lot of those skylights and stuff like that. I can imagine a lot of heat sink. A lot of air went through those skylights. If, if we were to go back to the one that we have here, you notice weatherization on the junior senior high school is red out. The reason it's red out, the only fresh air you get into that building is windows. leakage. And the new uh, ventilators is, is pulling the stuff up. They have to do something with the fresh air in that building. Should we go? Yeah, uh, Mr. Chairman, we on the uh, roofing committee, Mr. Sexton and I and Mr. Solomon, we have discussed that we're obtaining uh, budget amounts for revamping the HVAC system together with makeup air, but you're absolutely correct. Makeup air is coming in through air infiltration in that building and has to be addressed. That's correct. And uh, we know that that will probably be a neighborhood of about half a million dollars. Exactly. If you look at the slide up there, I have half a million dollars up there because when we looked at it, um, it was $50,000 for each air exchanger we looked at for our energy management services, the engineers that came out and looked at it. All the air exchangers, you look on the building, they're all covered over. Oh, I know. No fresh air comes in the building, and yep. we are not going to weatherize that building and seal it because it's only going to create a bigger problem than it is here. That will be included in the final report. Mm -hmm. And, we, and if, you, if you want EMS's report from us, on the air exchanges, we happy to make it available for you. Thank you. And like I said, those are actual data loggers on that. Okay. I think that was all my questions or concerns. Oh, good. Okay, so we know vehicles, no nothing, just goes what the energy committee is recommending. Yeah. Yeah, I think Okay, if we have a motion and a second, and this will be emailed out tonight. 
It has to be in their hands by the morning. I will make a motion to go with the recommendations from the Energy Committee. I'll second that motion. Any more discussions on the FY20 Green Community application? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Three ayes. And Kathy, I will email you the spreadsheet tonight as long as I send them out to PVPC to begin the application. Okay. Now I don't want to see any of my changes. I messed it up. Oh, sorry, we're at two frame rental. Yeah, no, I'm just cutting the, the TV off. Oh, I thought you said you were lost. No, no, no. Uh, next is correspondence. Oh, yeah, we haven't done that. Yeah, we haven't done correspondence yet. Uh, actually, I've done them all. I don't know if you need them because they did new ones came out today, and I did them already. And I, would, when I, when we do this, if I have a comment, you notice it's in red. You write it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I just go back to my laptop, and under correspondence, the only thing I had was they had something about a zoning document, something required mm -hmm. for Clark or something like that. Yep. That was the only thing I saw under correspondence. And the, and the planning board will be handling that. Right. So. so it doesn't even involve us? No. This barn looks nice, though. The barn does look nice. But I, I, again, not being on the planning board, not being involved in the project, I don't know what kind of requirements. Because I didn't on those, I don't see any topographical maps or anything like that. But that's up to the planning board. They can decide what documents they need and don't need to make their decision. And sometimes, like the Bowen Gun Club, if we don't require the documents, we pay for it later. So you sent your check off, you're going to make the motion for correspondence? To accept the correspondence? When have we ever made a motion to accept correspondence? No, no, no. Oh, yeah, okay. No. Yeah, then we go right into frame rentals. Uh. You're trying something new, Jay, are you? No, it's just it's been, been a long like day already. <laughs> I just, missing something. I'm, I'm just checking stuff off on the <laughs> list here to yeah. make, make sure we get everything done. Two frame rentals. Okay. First one is for a anniversary party, June 28, 2020, number of people, 200, liquor authorized, no, for the large pavilion, gazebo, and bathrooms. Uh, next one is a dedication ceremony of the dog park. Uh, they're looking for the large pavilion, kitchen, and bathrooms, and the dog park area. Mm -hmm. Uh, under this one, the Parks Oversight Ad Hoc Committee is recommending that all fees be waived as this is in memory of Casey Collins, whom the family has donated money for the improvements to the park. I think that would probably be appropriate a thing to do. Now, what is the date of that? July 18th. July 18th. Maximum number of people, 300, no liquor. Since they've made such a large investment in our town with that donation, uh, you want me or somebody to show up, put it on my calendar? I don't, uh, that far out, I have no idea. I'll be there anyway. Oh, see, I didn't even know that. Okay, we will have select board representation. What? I'm part of the park. I, I, I didn't, I didn't. Do you want to speak? No. <laughs> But we have a minimum, <laughs> yes. a, a select board will have a minimum <laughs> representation there for that. That's all I was going with. Yeah, that. no, that's, that's fine. Okay. You want to just stand up and say thank you? Yes, I will. Oh, are we doing a, like a plaque or anything in honor of that? Yes. I'd have to check with A plaque yeah. is going up. Okay. It's going on a stone, I believe they moved over there. We, yeah, oh, we were supposed to, but we couldn't find anybody to cut the flat side of the stone. So oh. it has to be. Oh, okay. 
No one apparently cut stone in like just a stone masons are hard to find. Yeah. yeah. They looked Certainly everywhere. Yeah. Mm. So I think that was part of the problem they're having with the, the wall too, the memorial, the veterans wall. Really? Oh, they have the same problem. A stone mason. A stone mason. Yeah. Oh. So. They're few and far between. Uh, and the final one is for Rainbow Rescues Inc. On August 22nd, 2020, no liquor, maximum number of people, 200. It's an informational community, community vendor event. Uh, Rainbow Rescues is a foster-based volunteer-run animal rescue organization with an active 501c3 status. They are dedicated, they have a dedicated and loving group of volunteers and foster homes that allow them to do wonderful things we do. Their goal is to ensure their pets are in happy and loving new homes that will continue to love and care for them as they deserve. So, sounds like a uh, rescue, dog rescue operation. Mm -hmm. Wild animals. Cats, horses, they rescue everything. Next one is the I have a wood pile request. Ooh, okay. I have a concern on this one. Basically we have a gentleman who lives in on Batcher Street, but he wants to be able to register trucks with plates from Vermont on it. Why? Because <laughs> they're his company trucks. And he, they're the company truck, the trucks for the company he works for. And he wants to be allowed, be allowed to take, bring those into the park or to the cutting areas and load them with wood. I, have, I just have a problem with that. We, well, get, we got into that before, especially with it being a company vehicle. I don't want to take a chance of any damage occurring. Okay. Well, oh. my, my, my more concern, I guess, is that it's supposed to be for residential use. Well, he lives on Bachelor Street. I understand he lives on Bachelor Street, but if he needs two different company trucks to haul wood in. How much is he going to take? How much he is. He doesn't know what truck he's probably going to be using. So let me. Uh, so I, I think a little different in here is that the registered in Vermont, because maybe that's where the business is out of. Um, but the, the, I mean, it's not to say that commercial vehicles don't go in there. Anybody that owns a business that has a pickup truck are commercial. No, plates, I understand so. that, but to register two? I guess my question is, are you planning on sending both in to get wood, in which case are you using it for a residential purpose? Or are you doing it for resale? Or are well, you doing right. it for resale? And I don't want to... Or is he bringing it up to his company and using it to heat his company's in offices? Vermont. Right, that's... Not me, he called that his personal use. So... If he had a different vehicle that was registered in Massachusetts, we wouldn't know. We wouldn't know that, anyways. I, I think it's just to ask him, though. Is this for your use at your own home? Oh, he's going to say yes. You know that he's going to say that. These people, these people aren't going to. I don't that. know who he is. Yes, Kathy. That is. Um, that's not the work one. So his residential address is Bachelor Street. Granby. His vehicles are registered. There. And right now, what happens is he um, takes those vehicles to the highway, and Dave fills them up with wood. Right so now. Dave has been doing this all along. And have we checked with Dave? Dave didn't see a problem with it as long as he just wants to live out of it. Precedent has been set. But that was done prior to creating this new This new system. rule. Hey, if the board wants to allow it, you know, we just need some guidance because the issue is, is 
It was really for people who needed it to heat their homes. Right. You're right. Glenn, could I see that again? Mm -hmm. I, I guess the only way you could honestly check on that to see when those trucks left the wood pile, where did they go? Do they go back to his house? Do they dump them there? Is he using them there? Or do they just disappear and go somewhere else? Go, 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 go. No, that's not what I wanted. I wanted well, maps. You know, you know, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, I know exactly what you're saying. So there's two sides. I know Dave is concerned with ending up with too much wood there. Well, cause we don't want to pay to get rid of it. Right. Right. Um, and the other part is that it was, it was having, anybody going there at this point and grab wood, it wasn't just for people that were. No, you gotta have that sticker it. now, you gotta get Susan's out. No, 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 I, I know that, but what I'm saying is that it wasn't, you know, because last time we had people here that they used it, it wasn't like a certain qualification that they had to go through to, to go in and get the wood. Yeah, but that don't change under the new policy. The new policy doesn't say that. Yeah, if you read it, it's for your own use and stuff like that. Your own personal uh, use. Your own personal use, but it doesn't say that, you you know, it's, it's for, you know, heating your home or anything like that. Someone can use it out in the backyard for a fire, plate, fire pit. Well, fire there's place. plenty of pine for that. Dave's got plenty of pine for outdoor yeah, use. Stand I'm that. just saying. I'm just saying that's... Um, mm. Well, if he, is, if he is using it to heat his house, I can see why he would need so much. The house is fairly large. Oh, you just looked him up on the phone? Did. What? I could have called on Google Earth for you. I just did it. Oh, okay. I mean, I put it up there for you. Well, that's a little bit invasion of privacy. So it's either yes or no. I guess what we're looking at. Um, we already have him provide an affidavit saying that it is for his house. His he personal. Signs off it. Residence. Personal residence. He signs it, and that's you know we can. I don't know if we can hold him accountable. For I mean, really, how do we? Not. How would we find out if it's not? Yeah. I haven't. You gotta, sometimes you got to trust people. I don't trust anybody. Um, I. Well, I don't know. Drove by. I don't know how much wood was dropped at West Street. Does anybody know that answer? Uh, he drops on occasion. Because yeah. there is still a decent amount there from yeah. what I saw from coming up. He just okay. You know, he, goes, he, he looks and keeps bringing it up. So it's been going quickly? Yeah. And there's been no complaints from any of the West Street residents? Okay. okay. Just the one plate complaint from the one Congressive Street resident. So I guess my feeling at this point, Glenn, would be less. Let him continue, but have the conversation that, as a reminder, it is just for personal residential use. But the, the point I'm making is that we're focusing on the vehicles not being registered in Grand Bear, even in Massachusetts at that. But it's not to say that anybody else going in there that has a vehicle that's registered in Massachusetts or in Granby isn't taking the wood and going somewhere else with it. We're folk, the, the reason it's in, it's in front of us right now is because the vehicles aren't registered in Granby. Right. They're out of state plates. They're out of state. They're out of state plates. Which That's my concern. No, and I, I understand that, but I'm saying the same side, though, someone could go in there with a vehicle that's registered in Granby, registered in Massachusetts, and take wood and go somewhere else with it. He lives in Granby. He is a resident of Granby. I mean, that's, that's, there's no and if buts about that. Okay, you guys are going to think I'm really dumb. The only question that's dumb is the one not asked. Oh, no, this one's going to be really dumb, I'm sure. Once I find out the answer, I'll laugh at myself. Um, what is the make of that second vehicle? K-A-R-A? -A? Or is that not a dumb question? Does anybody know the answer? K-A-R-A? -A. Yeah, so the first make is a Ford. The second make is a K-A-R-A. Is that a trailer, maybe? I don't know. What does it say? TL. Could that TL. be a trailer? Yeah, I'm wondering. Could it's it be a trailer. a trailer? Yeah. Okay. So basically, he's giving the registration for his vehicle and, and trailer. And the trailer. It's a caravan. It's a caravan? 
Is that your guess, or did you look it up? <laughs> yeah, it's it's not. That's an actually name. It's a abbreviation name brand of a trailer. <laughs> Yes. It's a trailer. Okay, because yeah. the model is a TL, so that would make sense. Okay. It's a pretty big trailer, 1,450 pounds. I could haul a horse or two. Mine can hold a ton. My trailer. Mine can too. That, that, but that's not a ton. No, the unladen weight is 1,450. I mean, I was just making an observation. It wasn't anything pertinent, really. I just didn't know what the make of a K-A-R-A -A was. That was my question. Oh, dude. Okay. I told you I'd feel stupid. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> Should I show G-Cam? No. It says, no, you don't have right that. there, trailer. Never mind, trailer. You still don't know the name brand, so it's okay. I'm done, I'm done, I'm, I'm good. That's okay. I'm good. You can have this back. It's embarrassing. Either way, if we sign it or we don't sign it, we're going to set a precedent. Correct. Okay. If you don't have in-state plates, you can't have it. Or you can have out-of-state plates, and you still can have it. Either way, you're going to set a precedent. So what precedent do you want to set is the question. The wood yeah. pile I know it. is for residents of Granby. You're correct. I don't care where the vehicles are from. They live in Granby. That is a residence where they live. Is he a full-time resident? I don't know. Well, if it's Clint's going to hurt me. If, if it's registered <laughs> there, if, it, if the, that's where his driver's license says, that's where he is. So he's a full-time resident. You have to be, because that's his, if he's a voter, you have to be 181 days. That's his full-time residency. Is he a voter? <laughs> I think we're getting a little far off topic here. <laughs> you, 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 you what, said uh, is this board going to allow us to issue him a permit or not? No. I, I'm, I'm okay with it, uh, just based on he is a resident of Granby. Um, I, I think our should state that that is for personal use in your residence in the town of Granby. And it already like states that's that. what it says on that form we did. I, I understand that. But that's that's the point I'm making. So, so that's Glenn's what the going form with says. So I'm trust. filling it out. So. It says that, and you know, it's, you gotta trust people. Trust in our fellow man. Or woman. <laughs> That's dangerous. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll, I'll go with whatever the board wants. <laughs> Sorry. Just give us directive. Are we allowed to issue the permit or not? We don't have to take a vote. Just give a directive. Sure. Okay. Uh, next thing I have is we have the South Hadley Granby Household Hazards Waste Day coming up, uh, scheduled for May 9th, 2020. Uh, basically, it's uh, again going to be uh, uh, Clean Harbors will be providing the collection services. Um, there'll be more information coming out on how to register. Normally, you call the Board of Health and register with them. And of course, there is a cost associated with whatever is collected. And it's going to be held at the South Hadley dump, correct? It's where it usually is held, but yeah. that's you, that'll come out in another flyer okay. from the Board of Health. So. Okay. Okay, just so you know. <coughs> so, that's all I have there. Did, um, did anybody hear anything about the police department doing a paper shredding day? Mm-mm. There was something on Facebook, I didn't know. I didn't see anything. That's what I was going to ask Mr. Martin that we were thinking about doing one for the town. You got departmental reports? Have you seen them, Glenn? I have. Unless there's been anything new since this afternoon. I didn't have, morning. I didn't get anything new this today. Yes, the department reports came in new today. There was a new departmental report today? There was about four or five of them I today. didn't get any. I got them all and I read them all. No, <laughs> oh, you haven't been checking your email. Apparently not. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. When did you send them, Kathy? Oh, that's probably why. I did have them broken down into Monday, but once I read them, I dropped them into department reports. Because otherwise I could tell Aww. you exactly. Building, it was, uh, yeah, building, fire, police. And there, there was, 
And there was a memo there so from all the, of them. <laughs> and there was a memo there from the Energy Committee to the Select Board. Some people, residents, came in to the Energy Committee and they want bylaws for the small and medium solar. So we just put it in writing and sent it to the Select Board so the Select Board can decide if they want to afford it to the Planning Board or not. We told them we didn't have any authority for that. We work for the Select Board, we send a memo for it. So there is a memo in the correspondence for that. Yeah. Under what? a certain size, it's by right. So nothing you can do about it. No, you can still put bylaws around it if you so desire. But with a certain, if, under a certain, under 250, it's by right. So. They want a screen. They want a screen is all they want. Oh. That's all they want. They, 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 can, they can stay there by right. Mm -hmm. They just want it screened. Okay, these are the new ones, if you want to. And that's a new one. Yep, that's a Jeremy one. I noticed in Jeremy's, he says the cars are still entering Dufresne's Park. They put down logs and people move the logs to get in, correct, Mr. Martin? Some they can move, but otherwise they'll just go around. Right. Do you see anything there? For what? From Kathy. I don't know. Why do you have this done? I think I deleted it again. That's why I dumped it in. There's nothing in my email. She did send it out to everybody because I did see it. Can I swear I haven't deleted anything from you? There's the presentation one right there. Yeah, I see that one. That's from you. Yeah, but there was one from Kathy, and it was addressed to everybody. I just didn't open it. As soon as I dropped it in my files, I delete the email because why store it in memory in both places? All right, let me see if I accidentally put it into the Grandy Select Board file. And maybe Kathy's using junk mail now. No. Kathy's not junk mail. I didn't say she was, but I have some emails that pop over there sometimes. No, you just throw her in spam. You get tired of looking at everything that comes in. No. I just checked to see if it went into my Select Board folder, but no, I've got nothing. Oh, well. I can show you this way. No, I just want the email. New fire trucks coming along nicely. Yeah, three, two, three, two, three, two. Those are the ones that came in today. today. Yeah. Because you know I mirror. Unless this. my email's not updating. I don't mind not to. Mine's turned off. But it updated <laughs> at 1130 when Chris emailed me. Because I, I, I don't use the smartphone. I'm so proud of you for having one, though. Uh. You leaving us, Jennifer? Yes. She's like, I'm going home. We next meet again in March, right? For that collective bargaining? Yes. Okay. Have a nice weekend. Thank you. For well, the uh, school collective bargaining contract. It's the two Jennifer's and I that are doing the collective bargaining. You good? Yes. All right, I will make Thank a motion you. to accept the departmental reports. I'll second John the motion. Any more discussion on this week's department's reports? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Three ayes, Kathy.
drink some more coffee. You have a note down here, email to finance yeah, committee? Coffee. That's my problem. Yeah, I can send uh -oh. it to them. Okay. Don't run. To schedule a meeting, a joint meeting? Well, no, you asked me to, send it to ask them about whether they wanted a, uh, to do it on Saturday. Oh, that's right. The voting? Did you fall asleep, okay. Steve? <laughs> they weren't quite sure you were, why you were asking. Well, Chris said uh, at the time you should ask them, so we that's why we sent it. What are you talking Probably about? The best oh. person to be called is Kathy Kelly Reed. Yes, because she's. You are 100% correct. 100%. Do you, do you want a select board letter on top of that energy committee letter about that screening on the small and medium to send forward? Or just send it as is? You just send it as is, unless the energy committee has a recommendation. That's all it is. I don't know if you want a, a, a cover letter from the select board. I sign it. No. Okay. Well, I'll just have Kathy. Hey, Kathy. Glenn says he does well, not want a cover Jay, letter from the select Chris board. Chris says we should have so it was formalized. What's a form? So okay. The selectmen are forwarding the request oh, to, okay. to the Because the energy committee board. is appointed by the select board. So yes. Okay. Hmm. Okay. So we'll do that for our next meeting. That's not a big deal. We'll just get it done. Department well, report. not going to be here. We just did. Glenn won't be here next meeting. Hmm. Look, you don't need me here for everything. We can forward. <laughs> we can't function without <laughs> you. We, we, as long as there's, there's a majority, we continue to move on and keep going. Because <laughs> if, if, if he, we can't do anything because he's not here, then why are we coming in? Good question. <laughs> I say, I say, we keep going. Uh, did you want to answer? No. Okay. <laughs> So you gonna make a motion? As part of the I did. Yes. Glenn seconded. We voted. Oh, we did. I didn't. Yeah, so and you said Kathy three hours. <laughs> three hours. I told you. It was it's late. We're up to the warrants now. It's late. Yes, we're on the warrants now. Okay. Uh, warrant number fifty-one, which is a payroll warrant in the amount of four hundred fourteen thousand six zero nine zero six. Then we have warrant number 52, which is a maintenance warrant, which is basically we're paying our tax, or the taxes withheld, and because this is a end of month one, we're paying our insurances, and that is a $464,037.99. And then we have Warrant number 53, which is a bill paying warrant in the amount of $219,997.60. All righty. I will make a motion to approve the warrants number 51, which is payroll, 52, which is maintenance, and 53, which is bill payment for fiscal year 2020. I'll second Jen's motion. Okay, any more discussions on our maintenance warrants? 51, 2, and 3. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Three ayes, Kathy. Approve and sign the MSBA Commission Certification of Completion. Okay, as part of the closeout for the uh, renovation addition project that the uh, MSBA helped fund, we have a, another form that needs to be signed by uh, the chairman of the board, uh, superintendent of schools, and the school committee chair. Uh, basically, it's saying that uh, everything has been commissioned and is functioning properly. However, as part of the completion done by the uh, school, they had issues that they wanted to let the school building authority know. First item was the heating glycol system leaks throughout the building. Uh, that is Adams Plumbing. They have been responsive. Issues have been resolved to, their, to the school's satisfaction. And they have extended an additional warranty period for the system. The kitchen makeup air unit is, is tripping the breaker, not starting, causing the CO2 alarm to go off. Again, that's Adams Plumbing. They have been responsive. Issues have been resolved to the school's satisfaction, and they have extended an additional warranty period on the kitchen makeup air unit. Fire alarm horn strobes exterior are getting water in them from leaky seals. That is Griffin Electric. 
they have come back out and repaired the units and sealed them. Issues have been resolved to the school's satisfaction. Uh, parking lot light units are falling out of the fixtures. That is Griffin Electric, and the school is claiming they came to repair once but will not come out again. Uh, classroom whiteboard projectors, images not responsive. They have been responsive. Issues have been resolved to the school's satisfaction. And the final item is the ceiling speakers in the cafeteria are pushing ceiling tiles out of the ceiling. Again, that's Griffin Electric and Ocker's company. Neither company will accept responsibility to fix them. So are you going to allow Mr. Joyce to sign? How are they going to get fixed? I'm not. I don't know. Not until they're fixed. It's a brand new building. That doesn't even address the seat where the floor is separating. Well, apparently it wasn't something the school cared about. I guess. Well, that's an annoyance. There's an inch gap in the floor. Well, I'd like to know myself, if we paid all this money, who is going to fix it and it's un if it's under warranty? It's under what warranty. What happens if we don't sign that? I th that's my point. You know me. I know. If I don't like it, I don't sign it. And you send it back to the school and ask them who is going to fix the unresolved issues. And where's the money going to come from? Because the taxpayers should be paying for it twice. So have these people already been paid? Under the contract, yeah, but not for... Warranty. Actually, the whole project's basically been closed out. Mm -hmm. So the school must have accepted it at some point that uh, the work was completed to satisfaction. And they must have to sign some document that said it was completed. I'd want to see that document. They want to accept it. I don't think the taxpayers should pay for it twice. No. That's the reason the school was under warranty. I wouldn't have signed it. speakers is the issue mm -hmm. that and the, the uh, light fixtures are falling out mm-hmm parking lot light fixtures are falling one out. one in the playground mm -hmm. right over where the kit where the bench is and I sure hate for that fall on a student mm-hmm yeah. well obviously there's a problem because they came out already to fix them and they're still coming apart mm-hmm something's not right there I mean, I will give the one on the playground potentially could be hit by a ball, but they should have. It, 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 Mitch, if the work isn't done about. properly and it was paid for, and that building is still under warranty, that it should have been well, fixed. It depends on the warranty covers, too. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, Mr. Martin can correct me that that's why the MSBA calls it for four seasons to go through. Right? So that all that should still be under warranty. I would presume so. Yep. I don't. I haven't. I haven't seen the warranty documents. Yep. Who's school, got those? The school would have those. The school has them. I don't have them. I didn't know if the town had a copy of them. No. No. Mm -hmm. no. All we get is the warrants to pay their bills. Correct, Chris. Well, I'd like to find out mm -hmm. the two that they won't repair. Why? There's why? Somebody's behind it. Yeah, and where's, and where's the money going to come from to do the repair? But it's just the, this electric company that is... I would recommend not signing this until we figure things out. I think you guys know me well enough by now. If I say no, I don't sign. I'm just saying. I'm going to write nope. Can that make it to Mr. Martin? Can we compose a letter back to the school asking them uh, 
why they are not holding the people for the non-conforming work responsible for it and uh, find out the reason why. And then the second part of the question is, if you're not going to hold them responsible, who's going to pay for it? Well, I think they also may be, I don't know this, but if the company's telling them they're not going to come back out and fix it, then they got to figure out a way to make it happen. It may be... Right, that's what I'm asking. Who's well, maybe, maybe legal matters. Right. So maybe that's why they're looking to us, too. Well, if they're looking for legal matters, they shouldn't be signing the document off saying it's good mm -hmm. to close well, out the project. In well, fairness, they did sign the it and they attached the list with the problems right. there. They're yeah. just saying they agree that it... Was done, but I. I think it's well, why wasn't it addressed with the commission right. agent? That's my point. I don't know. Do not know. Because according to this report, the commissioning agent signed off and said everything was okay, December eighteenth, twenty nineteen. Well, was it at that time? No. No, it was not. You know that for a fact. I'm in the school every day. Oh, same, but I'm not. I don't know. Yeah, did you check those ceiling tiles? I'm in the cafeteria every day. Did you check those ceiling tiles? Yes, because I'm afraid my kids are going to bounce things off the ceiling. <laughs> so, yes, actually, I do. <laughs> you ever wonder how hard it is to get magnets out of heating vents? I can tell you. Just use a bigger magnet. I don't think it works that way. <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> mm, yeah. I'd like to talk to the school first. And if they don't want to supply us the documentation, they can come in here and tell us why. I don't think they'd have a problem supplying the documentation. I'm saying, I mean, if they don't. They not don't. like it's classified. But like I, but I originally said, if, if, if they're asking the company to come back and that's a response from the company, and that's, they need to look at what are their, so what is their the, what avenues is, to what, rectify that. Where is the written agreement that it's going to be done by a certain time? Again, if they're calling this, the company and the company saying, we're not, we're doing not going to fix it, they're kind of, they're, what are, what's their right. avenue to like you get said, it? So be legal. What's the recourse? Right. The recourse, right. Okay, I'm ready to move on or you want to discuss it some more? Move on. Do frames. Park fees. Park fees. Did everybody have a chance to look at? Yeah, I mm -hmm. have right. proposed changes. Do you want me to go through them all, or? No. Uh, the biggest thing that I think the people out there should know that Granby residents get a discount versus out of town residents. That's to me the biggest thing. I think we should go over it because for the cameras. They, for the cameras, so people know what the changes are. Okay. okay. I, I know there. I thought you were going to read them. For oh. the camera. Okay. Do you want to read them or want me to read them? You can read them. Okay. Uh, basically, we have a recommendation from the uh, Parks nice, Oversight Steve. Ad Hoc Committee regarding uh, fees to be assessed for the use of uh, the parks, uh, the pavilion, the gazebo, and the small pavilions uh, of Dufresne Park. And I believe some of this would be for Brown Ellison Park also. Okay, first thing is current prices. Or actually, I'm going to do it current and then what the proposed price will be. Four, number of people in the party, zero to 200, Granby Town residents and town nonprofit. The current price is 182. It's being raised to $200. Out of town residents, current price is 260. Going to proposed price is 300. Out of town nonprofit, the current price is 221, going to $250. Four, 201 to 400 people in the party. Granby Town residents and town nonprofit. Okay, current, I see that. Current price is 235. Proposed price is 250. Out of town residents, current price is 335. <laughs> Going to proposed is 350. Out of town nonprofit, 285. Proposed, 300. Number of people, 401 to 600. Granby town residents and town nonprofits. Current is 452. 
proposed is 500. Out of town residents, current is 645, proposed is 675. Out of town nonprofit, current is 548, proposed is 575. For 601 to 899, Granby Town residents and town nonprofit, current is 613, proposed is 625. Out of town residents, current is 875, proposed is 900. Out of town nonprofit, current is 744, proposed is 800. 900 and up, the fee and deposit to be decided at the time of approval by the select board with a recommendation from the Parks Oversight Ad Hoc Committee. For the pavilion and kitchen, the current price is 70, proposed is 100. Small pavilions, current price is 20, proposed is 30. Kitchen, current price is 110, proposed is 130. Small pavilions, current prices, number of people in the party, 15 to 49. Current for town, Granby Town resident and town nonprofit is 46, recommended is 50. Out of town resident is 65, proposed is 70. Out of town nonprofit, current is 55, proposed is 60. Four, gazebo rental rental, which is the Kendall Street Gazebo and the Taylor Street Gazebo. Current price is for a Granby resident and town nonprofit, 46, recommended 60. Out of town resident, current is 65, proposed is 80. Out of town nonprofit, current is 55, proposed is 70. For the horse rink, Rental of the horse rink includes the use of both rinks and, um, and electricity. Number of people attending must be disclosed at the time of rental. If your show brings in over 100 people, then you will need to provide a porta potty for an additional charge of $95. Okay, fee type rental. Granby Town resident and non profit, 158. Proposed is 175. For additional potties, the number times $95 is current. Proposed is number of additional times 125. Out of town resident, rental is 225. Proposed is 250. Additional potties, number times 95. Proposed number times 125. Out of town nonprofit, Current fee is 191, proposed is 200. Additional potties, number times 95, proposed is number times 125. Okay, camping, group camping for dog shows. Camping space is located on Kendall Street, parking lot and grass area near the tree line, trails entrance. This allows you access to the entire open field near the gazebo the following is a list of user fees we provide apply to group camping. Fee type, rental, per camper. Town resident and not town nonprofit, 25. Out of town resident, 35. Out of town nonprofit, 30. Rental minimum per day, 150 for town resident and town nonprofit. Out of town resident, 150. Out of town nonprofit, 150. Electricity, $65 per day. Uh, basically what they're looking at trying to do is do camping for charter day, $150 for a week up to, for up to six units, $25 for each additional unit. And those are the fees. Anybody have any questions? No, I think Glenn does. I think Glenn does. Yeah, Glenn has that look on his face. Yeah, I'm just wondering, what's the camping thing about? Because they're not allowed to camp there. No. <clears throat> what happens when people come in a for a dog lot? show? They'll bring they'll their camping? camper. They'll come in with their camper. I know. Right. Okay. So basically, what we're saying is, if you, they want to stay on the grounds for the dog show, 
they get charged $25 or whatever the fee is per camper. So someone goes around, counts the campers, and say you owe us $35 times the number of campers. Is that something new? No. That's been people go up yeah. there with their campers, yeah. I've seen campers there during charter days. And, and there's been campers there yeah. during the dog shows. I've seen Core campers shows. there during the uh, uh, staying overnight. And I've never seen yeah. it. Yeah. I've just seen it for charter days. Yeah. Horse, horse shows too. Right. Yeah, because we had an accident where somebody uh, tripped over a a limb or a tree root when they were leaving their camper and it cost us money to have them pay for their medical bills. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'm just gonna roll my eyes. You can, you can roll. I did. That's okay. You just to note the fees haven't been um, increased since April first, thirteen. Yeah, that's seven years ago. Yeah. Any other questions, Glenn? No. Well, then I will make a motion to approve the proposed Dufresne Park fees as read by Chris Martin. I'll second the motion. Any more questions concerning the new Dufresne Park fees? Hearing nothing, all in favor say aye. 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 Three ayes, Kathy. Do we have to sign off on anything when they are camping there? Like do what they're allowed to do, what they're not to do? I'd have to look in the rules and regs and yeah, see. Is, is there something right. for liability now that covers this since that incident that he described? Well, you have to have liability. One would hope. I, I, I don't think we can. We try yeah. to. Okay. But because we're charging them to stay right. there, we're responsible. So it's up to us to take the insurance policy. It's a liability. Just like it is for when the Granby Preservation Society Sears, they said they had to take out an insurance yeah. policy. Yeah. Okay. And I'll bring us up to the. And the thing is not really to approve and sign. That's really just to let you know that mm. uh, for the two units that were installed at the police department we submitted the paperwork to the uh, state for reimbursement against the that was four the units. units there right it's two. four ports two four units. ports two units okay it's four ports yeah there were four eb charges each one dual ports right okay. but it's two units okay okay so okay and that's all i have Okay, and then I will get out my magic paperwork. Go into executive session. Collective bargaining. We are going to executive session in accordance with Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 38, Section 21, Paragraph 3, to discuss litigation that would have detrimental effect on the litigating position of the town if discussed in open session. We will be coming out of executive session to conduct regular business and need a roll call vote. And the only purpose we'll be coming out for is to adjourn the meeting. To adjourn the meeting, yes. Mm -hmm. Silva, aye. Sexton, aye. Joyce, aye. 